What I Watch series, sharing the show that perfectly depicts her childhood. Plus, on the way in our My Pet Tale, our friend Judy Greer tells us about her great love for her dog. And then later, we're diving into some beloved shows, Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Gilmore Girls, so fans get ready. All of that is just ahead, but first, let's see what we have up on Popstar Plus. Amber Ruffin joined us for our What I Watch series, the comedian and actor who hosts her own talk show, The Amber Ruffin Show, it's very funny, was kind enough to tell us all about the long list of shows that she cannot stop watching. What I watch when I can't fall asleep is not a good question for me. I can always fall asleep. TV cannot help me. I'm great at sleeping. If America was in the Olympics for sleeping, I would represent our country and I would bring home the gold. I'm good at sleeping. What I watch when it's late at night. I like to watch every late night show. Every late night show there's ever been, I love to watch it. I love to watch the old late night shows, I love to watch it now. Only because when I was watching it, I never thought I would have a late night show. But when you have one, you watch it, it's different. That was great! You know what else is great? Finally making this show for you all! When I was preparing for this season of The Amber Ruffin Show, I watched, um, you know, I watched some Carol Burnett. I did, I watched some Dick Cavett. I watched some of those old, like, variety show, variety shows. And it was very clear how little you needed. <laughs> There's just people goofing around. And I was like, oh, you know, what a relief. Like those cool things we remember. We're just people goofing around. And that's a torch I'm willing to carry to this day. <laughs> What do I watch? I like to, when it's late, I do like to catch up. So when I'm catching up, I'm catching up on my favorite shows. And my favorite shows are Queens. I watched every last episode in real time. And I can't just be allotting time from eight to nine at night. I still have work to do. And then Abbott Elementary. Hey, yo. What it do, baby boobs? What y'all think about this little film crew I brought in here? Distracting, makes our jobs harder. But exciting. We about to be on TV. Because they are covering underfunded, poorly managed public schools in America. No press is bad press, Barb. Look at Mel Gibson. Still thriving. <laughs> Abbott Elementary is great. It is just very character driven. But I do think that Abbott Elementary found some very fun characters and leaned into them. And even though they're big characters, you haven't seen them before. You know, they found a new take on, you know, the bully and a new take on the nerd. Like, it's all so fresh. It's great. And Quinta is the best. What I watch when I need comfort food is the same thing everyone watches when they need comfort food. And that's Ted Lasso. It's the most comforting show on planet Earth. It's just as good as everybody says, but... The people who love Ted Lasso might not know that they also love Joe Para's show, Joe Para Talks With You. It is this very gentle comedian, and he just is living in, I think, Wisconsin, and, you know, being his gentle self, and, you know, whittling wood and stuff. And along those same lines, John Wilson, How To With John Wilson, is also a very comforting show where you know, not a lot happens, but it stays interesting, and then afterwards you feel a little happier. Those are the three shows. What I watch that might surprise people is, it shouldn't, but it always does, is Grey's Anatomy. Man, I've been watching Grey's Anatomy since the very beginning. It probably started, I don't know, at this point, 12, 18 years ago? It's a million years old. What I watch that reminds me of my childhood. I don't have an answer to this question, but what I don't watch that reminds me of my childhood is Pen15. Pen15 is that show about those two very nerdy nerds going through high school or junior high, but it was so exactly what it was like to be made fun of in school that it was, and I was made fun of like no one's business, that it, I just couldn't watch it. There were these boys in our grade who were not kind to Look, I need you to beat them up, yeah. Gigi. Like, it just needs to happen. Why should I? See, like I told you, he wouldn't care. This is literally like the worst day of my life and he'll probably call me you just too. I, I tried, <laughs> I tried, and it was hilarious, but it just felt, 
it was too soon. <laughs> it's too soon. It's too terrible. Too accurate a depiction. Could not watch it. Never will. Great show. I'll never see it. What I watch that I'm obsessed with right now. The Eyes of Tammy Faye. That was so good. I mean, also, I remember each one of those moments. But it was great. And then I kept forgetting that it was Jessica Chastain. She did such a good job. And Andrew Garfield, I was like, how are they doing this? It was a great movie. The Eyes of Tammy Faye. But I want to laugh. I guess I watch Saturday Night Live. I'm a huge Saturday Night Live guy. Times a million. I love it. I've always loved it. I'm not one of those freaking turds who's like, it used to be. SNL is good today. It was good yesterday. It was good when I was eight. It'll be good in eight more years. It'll always be good. SNL is always good. Oh, I love Amber. So interesting, too, to hear about the late night shows that Amber loved before landing her own. All right. Thanks to uh, Amber for swinging by and hanging with us. We appreciate it. Coming up next, Judy Greer opens up about her dog, Mary, and how Mary's changed her life. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, on Lester. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. In our My Pet Tale series, we ask folks, of course, about their pets and how the pets that they've had have shaped their lives. Well, Judy Greer has a beloved dog named Mary, and we even learned just how much Mary helps Judy when she feels homesick. My uh, little furry creature, her name is Mary Richards, named after the title, Mary Tyler Moore's character from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I'm too young to remember it being on television, but um, I watched it, I guess I saw it, you know, probably on like TV Land or one of the cable channels in some hotel room when I was on location working and feeling homesick and it made me so happy. And I ordered all seasons on DVD and I used to travel with them so that I could watch them on my laptop when I was traveling for work because it was so comforting to me. I also really responded to the Mary Richards character because it was pretty groundbreaking when you think about it. I mean, this was a woman who broke up with her fiance, moved to the big city, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in order to pursue a career in broadcasting, which again, at the time was very unheard of. Well, I had the most uh, incredible male dog. His name was Buckley and I had him for years and he was my love and my roommate and my best friend. And you know, like all animals, unfortunately, he had to go live on the forever farm with his mom and about a year went by after Buckley left us and my vet Dr. Werber who I loved um, called me one day and was like hey I think it's time and I was like it's not time and he said just I work with a rescue they need a foster over Thanksgiving for this little dog would you just foster her and so that's when I picked up Mary and um, she basically curled up in a ball and just like I carried her around in a tote bag for two weeks and then it was the day before the adoption where I was supposed to take her and then all the people come and like I just lost my mind and I I called my husband and I'm like I can't, I can't get rid of her and he's like oh my gosh I'm about to shoot a live show fine we can keep her like please don't bother me at work anymore so my timing was really good but there was really something so special about having this little creature with me 
um, that did like, I think lower my blood pressure a lot. And I, I can't think of an um, exact moment in time when I knew she was staying with us, but it just felt like, oh, this is a good thing for me. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell people why it's so important to <laughs> adopt instead of shop. I mean, there's just so many animals that need homes. And there's even now so many like breed specific rescues that if you're like, well, I have to have this kind of breed of dog or I need, you know, hypoallergenic or whatever, like you can find that. There's just so many animals that like are needlessly euthanized. I mean, every day that could easily be adopted into homes. And I think that, you know, Fostering is such a great way to see how a pet's gonna work in your family. I mean, you can find such great animals and they're so happy to have a home and to not have to live in those cages. And Mary's like this tiny little cute, like teddy bear sort of fox raccoon looking dog, but she's really scary if she wants to be. So that took some getting used to and a lot of training. And she has chilled out a lot. She's really feeling self-confident. She's really feeling herself these days. Um, I started traveling with her when I go on location to shoot things and I brought her with me to New Orleans to shoot the thing about Pam and she went over everyone on set and in fact Renee Zellweger's character Pam Hupp has a dog and I can't tell you how many of my friends texted me after that first episode aired and they were like is Mary in the thing about Pam? Like, no, there is only room for one actress in this family. Um, but Mary was there and she was like running around and she was such a cutie. Sometimes when she's like a little judgmental and mean, I like to think that she's like my alter ego. My favorite thing with Mary, I love, I love going on really long walks and Mary really loves to go on long walks. We've walked seven miles in one day together. I mean, she'll just walk and walk and walk. I think she would walk until she would drop. The thing about Mary that's funny, like the thing about Pam, I just realized I said that. But the thing about Mary that's funny is that she plays really hard to get, but she's so tiny and cute that people keep like, they just keep wanting more of her. They keep wanting her. If she lets, if she lets you pet her once, then you just like want to keep petting her. But like the next day she might be like, I don't really like, I'm not like feeling you today. She really does march to the beat of her own drummer. And she's, uh, she's not someone that can be, pinned down, you know, like she might like you one day, but then she might not like you ever again. Every day is a new day with Mary. That's what I always tell people. Mary has made my life better in every single way. I used to get so homesick when I was on location. And now like when I have her with me, it's so much better. She's, she gives me a reason to get up in the morning and like on a day off. And sometimes I'm like, mm, I miss my husband and I'm homesick. She like, I think genuinely brings a lot of joy to work. Like she runs all around hair and makeup when we're in the trailer and she loves it and everyone brings treats and gives them to her. And she just, animals bring a lot of joy and they definitely like calm people down, I think. And so, um, yeah, she's just made my life better in every single way. Um, minus the dog hair that, <laughs> but she's little and it's not that bad. But I do usually have a lint roller with me. Thanks to Judy for sharing her great pet love. Coming up next, Melissa Joan Hart reminisces over Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. 
because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love that too. <laughs> And welcome back. Melissa Joan Hart was only 20 years old when she landed the role of Sabrina in the Sabrina the Teenage Witch show. And she sat down with us for our flashback series and shared what it was like to work on the 90s sitcom. I guess I would um, describe Sabrina as sort of a quintessential teen girl, doesn't want to draw too much attention to herself, but happens to wake up one morning with magical powers and has to deal. Wait. Don't come in here again. From now on, you use the freak's bathroom. I was 20 when I started it, and I actually created it. Um, it was an Archie comic, and my mom found the Archie comic book on a playground and she sold it to Viacom as a TV movie. And then my mom kept saying to Viacom, this would be a great series. And they were like, okay, uh, we'll see. And she kept saying, no, 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 it'll be a great series. I'm like, all right. And she was like, this would be a great series. And they cut it together. She cut it together into a uh, trailer and gave it to the network. And they were like, oh, this is a great idea for a series. She's like, yes, I know. <laughs> so the series came together that way. So uh, I never had to audition. It was my part created for me by my mother. The best part about playing her, so any actor, you know, we like to be actors because we like to kind of slip into lots of different skins and pretend to be lots of different people. And so having a series on the air for seven years for a lot of actors can be kind of tiresome because you play the same character for so long, you, 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 you want to stretch out a little more, you want to do a little more. But with Sabrina, it was great because I got to be everybody plus Sabrina. I got to be Cyrano. I got to be a trapeze artist. I got to be Cinderella. I got to be Rapunzel. I loved when she would take on some kind of personality or some other, um, you know, wardrobe or I was a snowman. I, I skied on Mars or, you know, so stuff like that. So that made it really exciting and different. And the actor in me loved that part. We'll see how they like it when they don't have somebody to enforce the law. I swear, the first person I run into. Aunt Zelda? Congratulations. You're the new sheriff. With Sabrina, I was definitely acting because I was definitely playing um, against my type. I was never the wallflower. I was always the one doing a dance performance in the middle of the room or, you know, and here's Sabrina who just wants to be like left alone and quiet and don't let anyone see me. And I'm, you know, I'm going to hide over here. And I just, I didn't quite understand that. So for me, it wasn't the most fun, like the things we were talking about before, like the playing the other roles or getting dressed up in fun costumes. That was all really exciting for me, but the actual character herself, I didn't necessarily identify with. Sabrina, you usually have good ideas. What sort of a fundraiser would you suggest? Pancakes! <laughs> My favorite episode when we were filming it, and still to this day, I think, is probably the pancake episode. I think because it was probably my first time doing physical comedy, and I really loved it. I was like diving in trash cans and, tra and just playing like an addict like that, like just being like, I need a pancake, I need a pancake. And like, it was something I could really, for lack of, for, you know, here's a nice pun, but bite my teeth into. Like I could sink my teeth into like that character and the fun that I was having playing like a strung out teenager in a kid's sitcom, you know? It was like, it was really fun to play. Like, I know a lot of people get excited that Britney was on the show or Sync or Backstreet Boys, but I was always thrilled and I requested, as the executive producer, I could do that. Um, people like the Violent Femmes, Blondie, um, Johnny Mathis for a Christmas episode, you know? I mean, who doesn't want to be with Johnny Mathis when he's singing White Christmas? Lonnie Anderson we had the best time with, or Raquel Welch I had such a great time with. And, you know, all the men on set, of course, were like, oh my God, it's Raquel Welch, you know? And I'm like, I'm getting to act with her for a week. And it was really fun. Getting to go from everything, from pop stars to hardcore rock bands to athletes. Uh, Brady Anderson, I had a massive crush on. He was on the show. Um, some of the guys from like uh, Baywatch and, you know, like all these like hot, amazing actors and actresses. And it, it was just such fun because everybody wanted to come play with us. Everybody wanted to be on a magical show. Everybody's kids watched the show and wanted them on it or something. 
we had a great chemistry. Everyone was there for the right reasons. Everyone was there knowing that this was a great opportunity. Nobody took it for granted. Everyone rode that roller coaster as long as they could, you know, like knowing this is a, we're on a network show in the heyday of television, you know, not only making good money, but getting a lot of attention for our work. And that's what every actor dreams of, you know? And so we got to be in everybody's house every Friday night and people all across the world felt like they knew us. It's been decades of hearing, you know, I grew up with you. I heard Daniel Radcliffe say it, and I've heard like all these people say, I grew up with you. And you're like, what? Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's the best compliment because it just means that they allowed me in their home and I was there with them. A lot of people, I was there for the hard times. I was there when they were in the hospital. I was there when they were going through depression and felt alone. I was there when they couldn't, you know, I mean, not just me, the whole show, you know, and a lot of the show, a lot of people identify with Sabrina uh, because of bullying or because of um, feeling like an outsider. You know, they might not have magical powers, but they feel like an outsider. And so I think that the show gave so many people hope somewhere to turn to where they didn't feel alone and lonely. And I think that that was, that was like everything, you know? Thanks to Melissa for chatting with us. Last but not least, up next, Gilmore Girls star Kelly Bishop and her love for Emily Gilmore's combative attitude. It's the best time of the morning, time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, I'm What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News. Streaming free now. It's the best time of the morning. Time for oh, that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. It's the best time of the morning. Time for oh, that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. All right, we're back. Kelly Bishop might be best known for her role on Gilmore Girls as Rory's harsh grandma, Emily, and she was kind enough to reflect on her time on the show with us. How would I describe Emily Gilmore? I used to say Emily Gilmore is a piece of work. She's um, no nonsense. Uh, she's smart. She's uh, conservative. She has values that are very kind of straight-laced. Uh, she's not foolish. She's, uh, she's up with current things, but there's a certain uh, value system that she expects people to live by, particularly her daughter. What was my favorite part about Emily? Well, I like the clothes. Uh, they spent a lot of money on my wardrobe. I liked her attitude. I mean, she was so difficult and demanding and uh, hard to please as far as Lorelai was concerned. Uh, and what I really loved about that whole show was Amy Sherman Palladino's writing, because it's some of the best material I've, it's probably the best material I've ever done. And, uh, oh God, amazing. Funny, smart, on top of it, and as everybody knows, really fast. So uh, that was just one of the many favorite things I loved doing that show. Lauren and I, uh, the day we met, it was like, okay, I could do this. And she and I became so close and still are close. She really is like a daughter to me and I really am kind of like a mother to her. We don't spend a lot of time, you know, talking to each other or texting or anything like that. But whenever we get together, it just clicks right in again. There's just a real love and trust and, and pleasure, you know, we, we have the same sense of humor. Uh, yeah, she's, she's great. I'm, I'm really crazy about Lauren. My all-time favorite episode 
actually the one that tickles me the most because it was so different. There was one uh, where uh, Richard, my husband's uh, mother, who was a very difficult woman, uh, had passed away. And uh, I found, if I recall correctly, I found a letter that she had written to him the night before our wedding, I think, begging him not to marry me. I know that the timing of this is particularly awkward since you are to be married tomorrow. No way! But your happiness is too important to me, so timing be damned. She wanted Dad to leave you at the altar. She begged him to leave me at the altar. She begged him in writing, and then she saved the carbon. And uh, that sort of sent me off. He wasn't there to support me because he was so grieving for his mother that during that episode I was drinking. There was even one scene where I was smoking a cigarette. I, said, I called it my, the Tennessee Williams episode for me. <sighs> Who was that at the door? It was Jason. Dad needs to sign something. Uh-huh. I mean, she was just out there. She was so un-Emily. Uh, that was great fun. I really had fun doing that one. There were a few episodes that I really liked, but that one was just such a departure. The zingers and the put-downs. Oh, boy. Uh, actually, one of my first ones, one of the reasons I love the pilot script so much, I, I couldn't believe this pilot script when I got it. It was so funny. And I had no idea who any of these people were or, or who the writer was, anything like that. It's when uh, Lorelai comes to see her parents in the pilot script, obviously to ask for money for Rory's education. And uh, I open the door and I said something to the effect of, is it Christmas? Hi, Mom. Lorelei. My goodness, this is a surprise. Is it Easter already? <laughs> or is it Easter? It was some holiday, which was indicative of perfect writing, of saying that's how often they saw each other. It was on, on holidays, Christmas, Easter, whatever it was. And then uh, Richard, my husband's character, comes in sometime later after we've done this scene, and he basically does the same thing with a different holiday. Hi, Dad. What is it? Christmas already? Lorelai was taking a business class at the college today and decided to drop in to see us. Favorite moments with Ed Herman. I just loved working with him. We really liked each other so much. I know, I know one of my favorite uh, scenes with him was when we did renew our vows and he, we danced to the song Bill and he said today, I mean, that was your favorite, you know, your favorite song and today you can call me Bill. Emily would tease me saying, if only your name was Bill, then this could be our song. Well, Emily, for tonight, and tonight only, my name is Bill, and this is our song. That was wonderful, you know. Uh, he was such a good actor, and very generous, very professional, but just a sweet, good man. Why is it still cooking? First of all, it's very intelligent. I mean, if you the smarter you are, the more you get it. And it's fast, and so you gotta pay attention. You don't have much time to laugh because you gotta catch up with what's going on. Um, it's funny. I mean, it's, it really is a funny show. But what I decided was that there's really an innate sweetness about it, which sounds kind of icky, but it's not that. There's a, there's a decency about it. Um, and one of the things that men started, when men started watching it, which they weren't inclined to because it was Gilmore Girls and all that sort of thing, uh, is that if you look at the male characters in that show, there's no nasty guy, there's no jerk, there's no misogynist, uh, there's no violence. They're just trying to make their way in the world like all the rest of us. And so there's, uh, what there is basically is an innate decency about these people. They're good people. There's, some of them are very strange, but they're, they're good. And I heard a wonderful uh, story last year sometime, that very often um, when the troops come back from maneuvers in places like Afghanistan and places that we you know, hear too much about, they very often sit down and watch Gilmore Girls. And I think it's because it's a feel-good place. It's like this is what America is supposed to be. Great to revisit memories like that. All right, that's going to do it. Thanks for tuning in to Popstar today. As always, we're so glad you joined us. Come back tomorrow and hang out with us again. Same time, same place. See you then.
Our today food guest, Nadia Katerina Muna, who is incredible, also known as the Pasta Queen. She's taken social media by storm thanks to her tasty Italian recipes and hilarious videos, earning more than 43 million likes on TikTok. Nadia's here to tell us a little bit more about this breakfast dish from the new cookbook, which I told her I was going to move a lot of units today. Yes. Where's the book, oh, Nadia? You. I need you, you to gotta have, have the book. book. Garçon. Here's the book, the Pasta Queen, a just gorgeous cookbook. Nadia, good to see you. So you said your daughter uh, introduced you to the Tiki Talkie. Yes. You see it and there's kids dancing. Yes. And how did you get into, how did you become a cook and a queen of it all? As, a, as I was about to delete the app off my right, phone, good, I good. stumbled upon a blasphemous lasagna. Someone claiming to have made the perfect lasagna. And it was terrible. It was terrible. And you knew you had to get on the medium. It was a mission. It kind of ignited the fire within me. <laughs> mission. All right, so what do we have here? And how, what is this breakfast pasta? So we are this? making a frittata di pasta. OK. This is a Neapolitan special. Every family has their own version. Today we're making a pasta cake made out of salami, eggs, cheeses. If I go to the streets pepper. of Naples, is this a street food? This is Italian street food. Okay. Well, let's and cut the salami. Best. Yes. That's a very large salami there. What, it is. is that, can you use, substitute that for any sort of meat? Yes. Or? You can do bacon, seasoned bacon. You can do mortadella, mm -hmm. um, anything. And also, it's beautiful because you can use any cheeses you want. Mm. Yep. I like fontina, Swiss cheese, provolone. Of course you do. Today we're using parmigiana and mozzarella. Okay, should I whip these eggs up? So now we're adding the salami. Hoda and Savannah are here enjoying Look at, the look at him. Hi. He's Hi. doing all the work. Yeah, no. no. Now make my nonna proud. Okay, She's good. watching. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh. And yes. a parmigiana. Yes. Okay. Great. It's beautiful. So we Gorgeous. have the spaghetti. Yep. These have basically been um, uh, kind of like tossed in with butter so that they're ready to be put into an oiled pan. Mm -hmm. And you really want to kind of like make sure that they're even. So this could have been last night's leftover like spaghetti, right? This is the perfect leftover. You can use short pasta, long yeah. pasta. No, any old pasta would work. Any okay. old pasta yeah. would work. Yeah, okay. It's perfect. Do you like it's doing like the TikTok you videos? Oh, oh you're sweet. Oh. Oh. That's so nice. Your husband's oh. taking away. Yeah. Your husband Don't said, worry, your husband said something Stop funny cooking in the kitchen. What did you say? You were the official? Chief <laughs> pasta tester. Yes. Just like you are. Chief pasta tester. The CPT. Yes, yes, just like me. All right, so we're cooking this. You want to get this crispy, right? So, do so you... now you pour this on. Should I do that now? Okay. Yes. Great. So this is the... Look at him. We should hire pasta. him. There we go. <laughs> So is that egg and cheese? This is egg, yeah. cheese, cheese, mozzarella, mm -hmm. pepper, salt, and salami. Yeah. Do, you, do you need to press so it you, down at all? Do you, you just move it a little bit so that you make sure that the sauce goes everywhere. Okay. And then you let it go on a low flame for about 10 minutes until it kind of sets. How is it? Mm -hmm. Delish. You like it? Gorgeous. Yeah. Did you make this? Yeah, I made this like this. Did wheelhouse? I make it? I don't know. Is this you hard? Know. Is this a difficult dish for Let people to make? Let me wait. Uh, we're not done okay, yet. No. Uh, yeah. So okay. this is the thing. Once this is cooked at the bottom, yes. yep. the bottom becomes the top. Uh, Just sometimes oh, okay, in okay. people, yeah. you know, in life, uh, you know, when you're at the mm. bottom, all of a sudden you're at the top. Uh. That's tasty. Yeah. So now this was the base, and we flipped pour it. Pour a little oh, marinara yeah. over it. But yeah. how did you flip it? You just like. So Let basically, yeah. you use a, anybody as a yeah. sheet pan, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you put it on top like that. Oh, oh and, and then, then flip it. Yes. That's how I always wanted it. See, then you slide tricky. it back in. And then, and then you, you let the it cook at the bottom for another ah, five minutes. Okay. So Grazie, Nadia. It's gorgeous. No, just like done. you are. We're not done. We're not done. <laughs> what, do you ever drizzle a little sauce on this? Like a little marinara, a little something on top? No. No? No, no. Carson. No. Absolutely not. So my 13 year old, when he wakes up and doesn't eat breakfast, this is like a piece of pizza. This is a breakfast. Hey, Dad, I'll see you later. Just take it with you. This is like hiking food, picnic food. Yeah. You can eat it cold, hot. Whichever way you like. Yeah, Love it. it's kind of like a quiche. Yes. But with pasta. Yes, cool. exactly. How much fun did you have making the cookbook? You have over 100 pasta recipes in there. And, and, and what is your favorite of all 100? The lasagna from my nonna. That's oh. your best. Okay. It's the top. If I was stranded on a deserted island, I would want to have that with me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's substantial. I like well, that. Well, congratulations. You know, Thanks for I don't want aglio olio. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yes. Grazie, Nadia. Thank Cook you for Focus. having me. The Pasta Queen. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Oda. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you. 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 Thank
Today we are in for a treat because our pal Scott Conant is cooking for us. Scott is hosting Peroni's Taste of Italy tomorrow night at the 15th annual New York City Wine and Food Festival where 100% of the net proceeds will benefit God's love we deliver. Hey, Scott, good to see you, It's man. good to be here. Thank you for having so me. So it's you and Alex Gornicelli. Is that me and, me and Alex, my good friend Come Alex. On. We're going to have a blast. That's a party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah, event is a party. She's, she's always so much fun. She's I love wild. her so much. And she is uh, she's such a great inspiration. She is just blowing up lately. So mm -hmm. we're uh, we're going to have a good time. Cool. All right. Night. What are we good. Yeah, we're going to make some pasta. I got penne. It's cooking over there. We have pancetta, butternut squash. Mm -hmm. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this butternut squash. I think a lot of people get... You know, it's a little bit of a challenge, butternut squash. You have to peel it. Mm -hmm. You have to take the seeds out of the mm -hmm. interior. So I always say there's two layers on that that you really want to get rid of, that, that exterior, and then there's a whitish layer. You want to get, get rid, rid of that, that as too. much as possible. And then cut it into, like, one-inch chunks, okay. just like this. Very simply put it on a sheet tray, a little bit of salt, Classic. Mm -hmm. a little olive bit of olive yeah, oil, always. and you could toss it in a bowl and then put it together. Stick I it roast in that oven. in like a 400 degree oven oh. for about 20 minutes or oh, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I really like that hard exterior. Then Got I it. take this pancetta, so raw pancetta, Look we're going to dice it just like this, and then Cook it in this pan that we have here. I already have some, okay, some in so there. Okay, so you chop it up into chop little Chop it up pieces. into little pieces, and then we're going to let that render out quite a Did bit. Did you put a, olive oil, or is that just the fat? I added a touch of olive okay. oil to it just to get it going. Mm -hmm. A little crispy pancetta is so good on anything, right? Give us a little texture. Yeah, and I was, I was just saying to Hoda that not a single calorie in this pancetta. Yes. You know, that's right? the Look good, at that. The, yeah, that's that special This kind. is the special, good, yeah, the special stuff. Right. We're going to let that render out and get a little bit crispy. And then, and then we're going to add uh, a little bit of sage. Sage, pancetta, I mean, oh. all these autumnal that? flavors. Oh. What is this? That's uh, a little bit of sliced shallot, okay. a pinch of crushed red pepper. Beautiful. I'm just going to let that mm. cook until, that, really? until it looks like this. Okay. This is getting a little darker than I'd like it to be. Okay. What we can do is take this penne right uh -huh. out you see, and I utilize that cooking liquid as well. So use that pasta water in there? That's pasta water. Yeah. So that pasta water, what happens is this is the same pasta water. And then as I cook that down, it's going to continue cooking the pasta about the rest of the way. So I cook the pasta about 90% of the way here. Uh, I finish it in this pasta cooking liquid. Do you like the liquid. pasta al dente or regular? I like it al dente. Everyone likes it chewy. Yeah. Okay. Well, there it's, you go. it's the, Thank you, it's the texture that's the so texture, delicious. The texture, you like a little bite? A little, a little bite, yeah. Okay. And do you do what I do, Scott? Do you just pull one out and try it and try to it. know it's done? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't I take the spaghetti and throw it against no, no, the no. wall. Does anyone yeah. actually do that or not? I mean, somebody must do it. Yeah, some. At mm. some point, somebody did. That butternut it's, squash is amazing. The butternut squash is oh. so good. Mm. That concentration of flavor. Oh, mm. Something as simple as throwing it in the oven, it really, it's great. Mm. I do it with broccoli and cauliflower. Really? Autumn, autumn squashes, all that stuff. It's oh, great. Oh, yum. Yeah. Anything more you can tell us about you and Alex and the event? Oh, my God. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. Mm. I don't even know how many restaurants are participating. Nice. It's, a, it's a ton of restaurants. I think there's still some tickets available, mm -hmm. which is the fun part. Alex is going to uh, sing a song, I think, at some point. Is she? Yeah, I'm really? putting her on the spot now. Oh. I hope she's watching this. I think she's going to. There's some, <laughs> there's some of those Italian classics, you know. Mm -hmm. da, 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 yeah, da, yeah. yeah, like the Godfather. There you go. <laughs> You're tan. Where were you? I live in Arizona. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Always tan. Right. You're around tan. <laughs> yeah. Cool. For this delicious recipe, and man, is it good. Head to today.com slash food. This is what it looks and feels like. The, the bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. NBC News, streaming free now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning 
so you can take on yours. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. The one and only Bobby Flay. For decades, we've watched him create some of our favorite dishes on countless TV shows and more than a dozen cookbooks. His latest is called Sundays with Sophie, and it takes us inside the Flay family kitchen, a collection of dishes inspired by meals with his daughter, Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this has got to be near and dear to you. You're, like, does Sophie cook too? You've been teaching her your skills? Yes, yeah, she, she does. So Sundays with Sophie. Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. The, oh. the idea is that it's, you know, it's Sunday meals or just meals for the family around the table. And actually, I, I devised a lot of these recipes during the quarantine because, like everybody else, I was cooking three meals a day at home. And so the recipes are incredibly simple, and they're really built for the home cook. Oh, good. I love that. Okay, yeah. simple. You had me at hello. Okay. Talk about this poached egg. This okay. is cacio pepe poached eggs. Coche, uh, cacio pepe <laughs> poached eggs. So cacio pepe simply means cheese and pepper. Yes. We usually see it classically on pasta. Yeah. But everybody's cacio pepe everything. Now, at this is this a breakfast or is this? I know. Is this breakfast or is this dinner? Oh uh, no. Like, this could this be is anything? like this is like breakfast or brunch or okay. like it could definitely be like a late night. Listen, I, I there's plenty of times I. I love, I love uh, you know eggs for dinner. Me too. And so basically, what I do is I make a vinaigrette. This is very okay. very simple. So it's some white vinegar, some honey, some shallots. Mm -hmm. Okay. This reminds me of what we did our cooking thing together. I know. Remember? I know. I know. Do you want me to stir that? I can do that. Yeah, now. sure. Go right ahead. <laughs> exactly. Look at me whisking. And then some olive oil, and then we're gonna add some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, of course. And then some mm. cracked black pepper. So okay. there, there's the cheese, there's the cacho and the pepe, so to speak. I mean, this is black delicious pepper. right here. This is our little dressing. Exactly. Okay. There you go. So then we're going to poach some eggs. And a lot of people are. Conti are I'm intimidated. Intimidated. All right, show me. So it's, it's two ingredients. One of them is water, the <laughs> other is some vinegar. Okay. okay. And the vinegar is going to help the egg. This is my big word of the day coagulate the egg. Oh, so okay. It, so it kind of breathes <laughs> it to A little bit. Do you guys know how to poach an egg? Al, no, I know no, you. No. Raise your no. hand if you can poach no, an egg. Al can. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Al poaches eggs with his eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to just, and, and, and here's a little tip. I, I crack the eggs and I first put it into a little ramekin because mm -hmm. if I break it, I don't want to put it in here. Oh, true. And a lot of times you do that if you just, you just kind of go right into the water. Okay. So we're going to let those poach. They poach for, you know, just like, uh, I don't know, three or four minutes. And, and, and the best thing to do is kind of just do a little whirlpool so it gets a, gets a okay. really beautiful shape. Seems like it'd be hard to get those out. Oh, no, they come right them. out. Really? As okay. As, you, as soon as you can get them out, you just take them out. It's very, very simple. Okay. Should be no problem. Okay. okay. We have some toast over here. All right. Okay. So. Um, sourdough bread, some kind of country loaf. I like mine like slightly thick, maybe, I don't know, maybe an, sort of like a, an inch and a half or so, or so like that. And then just some, you know, good quality olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread. Yeah. And then some salt and pepper. And this is one of the things that people forget. When they're making toast, don't forget to season it as well. Okay. Salt and pepper your toast. Like bring out the flavor of that delicious oh, yeah, bread I, that you I have. I never do that. Okay. Exactly. Good call. Okay. So we have the toast. I put a little more. I, I, I you take, just roast this in the oven, or you I'm put sorry, this in like yeah. the toaster oven? So you can oven. put it in the oven. You can put it under the broiler, or okay. you can just put it in a toaster. Got it. I think a toaster is probably the <laughs> best case okay. scenario, yeah. right? That's it easy. works. What's happening over here? Should we get these out? Uh, you can do that if you want, but we're down here. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was just want, concerned about that. Here. This is this is Savannah <laughs> in the kitchen right here. <laughs> this is distracted. Right, coming to Food Network. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some a garlic clove, and I just rub the garlic clove a little bit on, okay. the, on the bread, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yep. You know, this is a very savory meal. A little more olive oil, mm. and then we take our poached eggs, and we put the poached eggs right on top. Whoops! Mm. Right on top of our our bread. Okay. And then we take our dressing. Yes. Okay. Now this is the good stuff. And this Dressing's is where this is where all the flavor comes in. Okay. Oh yeah. Just How pour that you right over there. Wonderful. Insane. Insane. Finished it. Really good. Some Parmigiano. Oh my. Oh. Yeah. Some fresh Boom. chives. I mean, come on. Can you make the dressing ahead of time? Bob? Absolutely. And of course, you can use it for salads. Or you I was can about put it on to ask that. Vegetables. Anything. Absolutely. Very very versatile. Okay. But this is what I was doing at home. It's like you know, so during, yummy. you're at home. Like you just take the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and you make dishes. And and this this was one of them. Okay. Well, that looks. Should I have a bite? Yeah, I'm sure. so yeah, worried about those other Dive eggs. in and go grab okay, them out. Okay, I just okay. don't want them to work. You got to cut it. Okay, here we go. You, someone else going to have to read Gets this. Gooey. Gets gooey. Uh -huh. Gets gooey. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Well, yeah, Bobby. Wow, Bobby. That's a GIF right there. <laughs> Someone's working on it. You can catch wow. Bobby again on, on our hour. third hour. You can also get us recipes. Today.com slash food. Also, catch Bobby's Triple Threat tonight on Food Network. Don't forget the cookbook. Oh, yes. Sundays with Sophie. Yes, yeah, Sundays with Sophie and Triple Threat tonight at 9. We'll mm -hmm. see you there. On sale today. Right. Morning, Good morning. Welcome to today.
I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We need to pull up one extra chair at the table. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News, streaming free now. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, on Lester. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. The one, the only Giada De Laurentiis, the famed chef and founder of the website and blog, Giadzi. Is did I say that right? Yeah. That's so cute. Giadzi is here with a simple, flavorful recipe for pasta zozona. Giada, good morning. Hi. I, it has been a thousand years since we saw you in I know. person. It's How's been everything? A hot second. It's been great. It's been great. How's the fam? The fam's great. Yeah. Um, Jade started ninth grade, so I we're can't in high school that. now. Oh my gosh. So the days of like a little kid wow. are over, as you probably know well, because oh, your kids are getting older. They're getting older. Um, oh, and yeah, hard. and so I tonight I'm gonna jet off to Italy. I'm gonna go to Rome and oh. Milan and see some, you know, farmers and some uh, families that, you know, make the ingredients. I love when you go to Italy because then you come back and you've learned all kinds yes, of new stuff. Yes, and I collect stuff. all this stuff and curate it. And I already Jazzy. predicted that the tasters will have clean plate clubs right oh, off yeah. the board. Well, let's, the let's show this you how to delicious. make it then. What do we do? Okay. Pasta zazona. So I heard, I heard you've been cooking. Well, <laughs> that's a stretch, but no, okay. I have learned, I, I okay. can do well, a couple can, things. Can you hold a knife and chop this for I me? I think so. Or do you want me to do it? How do you want it chopped? Like that. Oh. Well, it's not going to be that good. Just watch your fingers, whatever you do. I know, that's what everyone says. This is a shallot. Yes. Um, I like the shallots because they're a little bit sweeter, but you could definitely use just a regular okay. onion if you wanted to. Okay, but let's pretend I did this. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Throw okay, it in there. there. Okay. Okay. No, no, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I got to take the, the panchita out. So this oh. is panchita. So this, the panchita this, is coming out. Wait, oh, this man. pasta is a mashup of two of Rome's classic pastas, okay? okay? Um, carbonara, which we all know is creamy. Hold on, hold yes, on. delicious. Here, dump it in there. Yeah, I was just like okay. taking an hour. Well, usually, okay. <laughs> usually I do this all in one okay. pan, but you know, today. Okay. Okay, great. That smells <laughs> okay. good. Okay, what is this, sausage? Yeah, and this Yum. is sausage. So it's a mashup of carbonara yeah. and I'm amatriciana, <laughs> both okay. Roman dishes. Okay. One is a tomato based, and one is like sort of a creamy egg based, okay. right? Okay, Would you so use you cook the these together. Pancetta plate, or whatever this is called, saucepan, if yeah. you normalize. Yes, so I use okay. one skillet okay. to right. do everything. That's what, some of the fat from the <laughs> That's what I was trying to articulate. Some of the fat from the panchita cooks the onion. Yeah, I like that. Okay, because the shallot. Okay. okay. What about So then, this? you can dump the rest of the shallot in here. Okay. This is great, because just dump a stir for you. It's I know, it is, okay. I do like Garlic. That. Garlic, okay. Big old whole Just clothes. have your husband prep it all for you, and I then know. you can come home and put mean, it together. Seriously. Right? Okay, wait, no, tomatoes first. Give oh, me the why does that matter, even? So that, I'm going to show you. Yes, the whole thing. So you see how smooth this is? Mm. So in, Ita in Italy, we call this a passata. Mm -hmm. So it's basically no seeds in it. Oh. It's very creamy. Yeah, and it looks... You buy it just like this. Okay, it looks like ketchup, but isn't. But isn't ketchup, okay. I promise. So I'm warming this up, and then I add the spicy stuff. Yeah, so this is Calabrian chili, mm -hmm. which you may have heard of. You guys all may have heard of it now. It's very popular these days. Delish. We're, we're too busy eating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> anyway, this makes it spicy, and mm. it's going to make it really spicy, because that's a lot of Calabrian chili. Okay. But you could use red pepper flakes yeah. in place of it, but this has more of like a, a balancing sweet to find, and though? spicy. All these fancy ingredients you've got. Can we find that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. On Jazzy.com.
Okay, moving oh, on. Oh, cool. oh, move oh on. my God. Shameless move on, but you can find okay. it out other places, Now, what too. are these cute little pasta? Okay, so look at this I'm little really pasta. pasta. Aren't they the cutest? So these are known as Nodi Marini. So they're from Marini. Naples. Okay. And you see they look like a little knot. I love them. Yeah. Aren't they cute? Marini. They're so like little donuts. I found them in Naples a few years ago, and then I started, you know, Bring them back for okay. everybody to have a little taste it. of Italy. Okay. Okay. Sauce is cooking. It yeah. takes about ten minutes, but on this burner it might take five. Okay. Um, anyhow, so that all cooks together. So this is the tricky part, right? I here. did not see eggs coming. Well, because I said it was a mashup between carbonara yeah, that, okay. and amatriciana. Amatriciana right. has pancetta. It's a tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Carbonara, as we all know. Okay. So how does yeah. this get into it? So it got into the bowl. Oh, I no, separated no, I mean, how the eggs. Egg yes. Get into the recipe. <laughs> yes, because it's, it's a mashup of car carbonara has eggs. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, go. What, so whisk? You're, yes, you're gonna break up and whisk the three yolks. Look at this, y'all. Uh, look at you whisking. See, see look how good you are, yo. I think you've learned a thing or two. I've whisked. I've whisked. Okay, okay, ready? So now we're gonna add pecorino, half a cup. Mm. And one cup of Parmigiano de Giano. Oh my gosh, now we're getting to it. Okay, so this is the trick right here. Okay. Because if you add this directly into here, it's what thick. happens? It's thick and lumpy. Well, you end, up with, you end up with scrambled eggs. Right, right, Which you don't right, want. Right, okay, right. so here we go. This is, a it's okay. this is my issue Just with water. It's okay, it's okay. okay. Ready? Water yeah. Okay. Is that warm Slowly, water, this is pasta water. Oh, oh. So we're using oh, it when so you cook water. the pasta, reserve about a quarter cup, mm -hmm. and you're going to use hot pasta water to break this up <laughs> and create a creamy sauce, slowly. So when you add this... It's really bugging me. Okay, yeah. Don't you always want to get that out of there? Yeah. I don't understand what would whisk. you do? It makes no sense. The whisk. Right? It always happens with there the whisk. Go. Okay. Totally fine. <laughs> okay. Don't take okay. it out on the whisk. It's totally fine. Okay. Leave the whisk okay. alone. Okay. 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 So you're going to use this instead, yes. and you're just oh. going to continue well, okay. to mix it. We got to keep mixing it. Well, okay. Mix well, and add. Right mix and add. <laughs> mix and okay. add. Okay. I'm so now glad that they gave us so long for this segment. Yeah. There we go. And that's it. So that this is. This oh, is now the part. we can get that yeah, in there. Yeah, so now you can get this back in there. All right, we're back to the. And ones. I'm going to add the pasta in the sauce. Remember when you had that cooking show, Savannah? <laughs> Remember, <laughs> it's coming back for the holidays. Oh, <laughs> oh, great. oh ye of little faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, you guys. You should come on it, actually, Jada. Oh, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I'd love to. Now that you've invited me, oh. now, now that you've invited me, I can come on yes. it. Okay, okay, now what? Okay, so now look. You ready? Yeah. Okay, off the heat. So we're going to turn the heat off. Yes. You want to do this off the heat? Go ahead and add it. And then you pour it in. This is exciting. I, there I we really go. didn't see this coming in the recipe. Well, what does it go. really add to it? Just like a thicker sauce? It creates creaminess. creaminess. Go grab a bowl and taste okay, it. Okay, I will, I will. And then it's we finish there. it. So we basically do this okay. off the heat. You got to do this yes. off the heat so you don't scramble the eggs. It just keep tossing it, and yes. the eggs get cooked by the boiling hot water. Mm. Mm. God, oh, and then the heat of the pan. This is so good. Oh, good. See, you look at good, good, is, good. Then a little bit of pancetta to finish oh, it off. Pancetta. Mm. Did you want to taste? No, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, that is that is so yummy. Mm. And then a little bit more cheese to finish okay. it. And we're done. Okay. Pasta de Zona. Dotty Marini. Jonna, thank you. But wait, you think more. I could do this? <laughs> you got it. She's back in our third hour with a creative spin on a lasagna Jeez. and a delicious Italian mm. dessert. You can get Giada's recipes and more at today.com slash food. Giazzi, thank you for coming. We Don't love you. We're back in a moment. This show. is today on NBC. Thank you, Delicious. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, Uncle NBC News, streaming free now.
if you planned on ordering Italian tonight, watch this one first. We're going to show you how to make a satisfying spaghetti dish with ingredients that are already in your kitchen. It's a recipe from the new book, Dinner in One, by New York Times food columnist Melissa Clark. Melissa makes oh, everything yeah. easy, Bobby. Bobby, do you cook? I, uh, I do not okay. cook. Do <laughs> Melissa, not cook we're going to teach you him how to cook. Exactly. We're going to teach you. Okay. okay. Okay, so we're going to make, we are making a pasta carbonara takeoff. Okay. So this is I'm an easier version because we're going to do everything in one pan. I like it. Simple. Yeah, exactly. That's the it's one. just because everybody, you know, people who love to cook still don't like to do dishes. Yes. So yes. this book is going to take care of that for you. So eggs and pasta and bacon. I'm so I confused know. right now. I know. You're, you're thinking, is it breakfast time or what? Yeah. This is a traditional carbonara combination, but okay. what I'm doing is doing it in one pan, and I'm going to add some fresh greens to make it a little lighter. Okay. Eggs. All right. So will you, will you beat those for me? You can do that. How right? many? Do I, five. So I have um, I have some eggs, and I have some I extra to, egg yolks. Is it just? Is this? I'm gonna do, I'm that's not beating. No, I told you I can't cook. It's, it's, but we're and then I would get it on our clothes, and it'd be a whole thing. I know. That's the thing about cooking. It can be a little messy. Now, okay, I'm going to use two kinds of cheese right here. Now, Bobby, okay. yes. this yeah. one is the Parmesan. Put it right in. How much? Okay. All the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. thing. Okay. Yeah, we okay. want a lot of cheese. We're going at it. it. Is that your wedding ring, the red one? It is. Oh, that's well, nice. Well, because it's rubber, and I thought I was cooking today, <laughs> oh, okay. and I didn't want to... You wanted to slip in and actually, okay. so we're yes. going to get messy. They're nice. chewy. Okay. okay, and then, Hoda, I've got also some um, pecorino. I'm pecorino. using two kinds of cheese look at all, look at to that. make it... One oh. is a little nutty, one is a little salty. Okay. There's a cheese called pecorino. Pecorino, <laughs> exactly, because guess what? It's made from sheep. expensive. All right, now we're going to add some pepper and some salt, okay. and then this is bacon. Oh, so, yeah. Now we're kind talking. kind of bacon? Regular? So, this is regular bacon. Mm -hmm. um, you'd use good. pancetta if you were in Italy, but okay. use whatever whatever kind. And I have some mm -hmm. onion right here. Mm -hmm. And bad. the onion is cooking in the bacon fat. Oh, and that's that is the part of what's going to make it mm -hmm. so delicious. I is that's going to have that Holy flavor moly. throughout it the whole thing. It smells so good. Exactly. Oh, All right. Okay. Now, Can I ask here. you a silly question? Yeah. Did you cook the bacon and then chop it up, or did you chop no, it up? No, I chopped it first. And that way you don't have to take it out of the pan. And it's just it's neater that way. All right, now here is the part that I love. So to make this a one-pot meal, we're going to cook the pasta in with the bacon. You're going to boil it in here? We're going to boil it in here instead of messing up another pot. What? And this is also, what's so great about this is that it allows the pasta to take on a lot of flavor from the bacon because okay. it's absorbing it, right? So we're going to add some water right here. Okay. Oops. And, and you just then, cover it. Should be all covered. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna okay. um, first we're gonna just let it simmer for a few minutes, and we cover it. Okay. And then I'm gonna add a little more salt. Okay. And I'm so intrigued by breakfast foods and pasta. I, I know, isn't it great? Okay. And um, and then another great thing about this also is that you can you have a lot of control over it because you're standing right here, so you know when it's perfectly al, al dente. Okay. So you know when it's just right. So this is what it looks like. This takes about 10 minutes, and afterwards, this is what you get. Do you throw it so, against the wall to see if it's done? That's what my grandma always told me. You want to try it? it? You want to try it? Do it. But, yeah, that one's not going to work. <laughs> if you do this one, you're just going to mess up your wall. Okay. It's definitely done. Okay. All right, so just give it a little just stir. Swirl it around. Exactly. Now, what about the egg mixture yeah, with all so the... so we have the egg oh, right here. Oh, there it is. And then this is what you do. You add it. So this is off the heat at this point, and the okay. pasta is hot. It's still hot, yeah. So it's going to cook the egg. You're not, you don't have raw egg here. You have um, the pasta cooks it immediately. It coats it. It makes this beautiful, silky sauce. Oh, look at that. You're doing that perfectly. Oh, my God. So you just keep pushing it around? No. Oh. no <laughs> When you, you know, do, I you do know not. what you're doing. Okay, so you keep mushing yeah, it around until it's all around. over. Yeah, and then, okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to, okay. so this is another thing that they do okay. not do with carbonara in Italy. They mm -hmm. do not add fresh greens. Oh, you add it And here? I'm going to add all, yeah, so I have the, some spin. Yeah, throw it all the in. The whole thing? The whole thing because That's what I, I said just, about the cheese. I couldn't exactly. believe it. Exactly. I know, isn't it amazing, though, and because it absorbs thing? it. What's and this? And that is um, parsley. Parsley. And basil. And basil. Oh, I love basil. And, yeah, and we're just making a slightly fresher, lighter version. keep mixing Mixing. Keep mixing. And another try thing. It? Yeah. Another okay. thing here is this is a one pot meal because you mm -hmm. have your veg. You have mm -hmm. your pasta, your eggs, your bacon, and your veg. Okay. Do you want a little what extra cheese? What hour do you eat this? Again, I'm so. What, what's <laughs> the perfect hour? hour? Of the day. 7 a.m. Right now, you or know 10 what? 10, 10 30. This okay. is the perfect hour of the day. 7 30 oh in gosh. LA. What do you think? Do you love it? Mm. See? That is so good. Bobby, you could make this mm -hmm. at home, right? You good. saw how easy that was. This is what I'm going to say. Sometimes. For example, like a frosting and a fry in the South. We do that. It shouldn't yeah. go together, but it does. Right. This is that. Oh, a so frosting good. and a fry. Ooh, yeah, that's it. a real, It shouldn't go together, but it does. It awesome. Yeah, but this does. Yeah. All right. To make this at home, head to today.com slash food for more of Alyssa's recipes. Check out her new book. You can get it at today.com slash shop. Dinner in one. I got to swallow here. Okay. Like a heart to get
I've never done this behind a bar. I know you look, you're slinging it pretty well. Thank you. Yeah. I like a little bit of a kick. Put some tahini on the rim. I know it's early, but whatever. Here you go, Willie. Aaron, thank you so much. I'm honored. Cheers. A toast to the end of a tour where Marin Morris sold out venues across the country and mixed up her famous margaritas on the bus. Yeah, I'm just not ready for it to be over. I wish we had done more shows. <laughs> Maybe we can add a few at the end. Yeah, we'll just welcome here and now. For fun. I'll, go, I'll go busk in the street. <laughs> yep. I bet you would, actually. You've, uh, done, yeah. you've done it before. I'll open the guitar case. The tour shares a name with her latest album called Humble Quest. What does Humble Quest mean to you? I think from 2020 on uh, to now, I've learned a lot about myself because my tour got canceled. I lost my producer, Busby, in late 2019. And so just everything was really humbling. I think just about being a human. It's like you are not in control. You never were. It was strange for all of us, but I have to imagine for someone who's been on the road for, what, 15 years or something like that, doing shows, grinding, hustling the whole time to just hit the brakes for two years. It was probably disorienting to you in some way. Your husband too, because he's a performer as well. I think the bottom fell out in many ways for me. And I've sort of learned through therapy that I have been doing this hustle since I was 10 or 11 years old. So I'm 32. I haven't stopped. It took the world coming to a halt for me to stop. Marin's son Hayes was born in March of 2020 in those first days of the pandemic. I think a lot of identity crises <laughs> happened there, not just like being a new parent and a new mother and dealing with, you know, postpartum depression for the first time and reeling from that and trying to like find the forest through the trees, but also just knowing my worth without someone clapping for me. I kind of felt like, this sounds so cheesy, but I, I felt like a woman, like the, the, the sort of form I was supposed to take a long time ago that I've been in arrested development over, it finally came because I had to stop doing this thing that always gave me this um, pride. So how did that manifest itself? What did it mean to you to become a woman, as you say? I think that I'm a child still in a lot of ways that I haven't properly matured uh, because I've always been able to throw it into music. But as far as relationships go, I think from a very early age, I've been taking care of myself and other people and just performing. And um, yeah, I think when you have your own kid and you, you kind of can't go to work, your purpose is very different. And so you kind of have to just like chisel it out of stone yourself. And I think I was probably supposed to do that a long time ago, but it just didn't happen until now. Don't know why, don't know why I let you, but I do. Cause I love chasing after you. She spent the time at home reflecting and writing songs with her husband, Ryan Hurd, a fellow singer-songwriter. As far as being creative with him goes, it was like, can we just please write something light to pull me out of this like pandemic doldrum and I don't want to you know sit in the ashes very long here so he kind of just helped me in song form and in just conversation form figure out how to get to the the light I drove circles around She began to find that light by reaching back to her early days in Nashville, long before she was a Grammy-winning chart-topping star. Circles Around This Town stands out among other great songs. What is the message of that song? What are you saying? Well, the, the line that I love is, I thought when I had hit it, it all looked different, but I've still got the pedal down, driving circles around this town. And that to me was like, I moved to Nashville 10 years ago with nothing. And I really had to build myself up and build my song repertoire just from scratch. And I think I still have that grind in me that is like, your best song is the last one you wrote. So you always are trying to one up yourself. And that's the beautiful competition 
art form that is Nashville songwriting is like all your friends are better than you. Mm. And it just, it doesn't make you downtrodden. It makes you excited to show them the last thing you wrote. So that community there is really special to me because I feel like they hold me accountable. They also make me a better writer every single time I go back into the room. Yeah, isn't it interesting? I found this too, where you think in the course of your career, there's going to be some moment where you go, I did it. And you put your feet up. But if you have the motor that people like you and I probably both have, you never put your feet up, right? Yeah, I mean, Ryan, my husband, jokes that uh, he'll be wheeling me off the casino <laughs> stage <laughs> when we're, like, I'm 90 or something. That's going to be my fate. Is like, I'll probably just die on stage <laughs> um, because I love it so much. I don't want to take time off. I don't like the idea of saving up a bunch and retiring because it's not a job to me. It's, it's like my passion. For breaking news in our changing world, Download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. NBC News. Streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You'll get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> it's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get an amen? After coming up on the honky tonk circuit in her home state of Texas, Morris spent her early years in Nashville writing songs for other people. But it was the one she kept for herself that changed her life. Church was a coming out party for Morris, and the hits have been coming ever since. I'm a 90s baby in my 80s Mercedes. I'm including two number one singles. When the bones are good, the rest don't Off of her second album, Girl. Don't you hang your head low. And of course, the relentlessly popular song, The Middle where she sang lead vocals with Gray and Zed. Did you have any sense when you put that song out that it was going to become this massive hit, number one, and change your life in the way that it did? I think it just opened up a huge world audience to my voice. And so if anyone ever heard that, like, baby, they'd be like, who is this? Oh, Marin Morris, who's that? And then, you know, they would go to my previous work. So why don't you just meet me in the middle, middle, in the middle, middle? When you sit down to write any new album now, do you think about hits at this point? Or are you just trying to write great songs? I think a hit for me at this point is just a byproduct of hopefully a great song. I can't go in and create with that formula in my head of what I think a hit will be because then you end up following a trend that someone has already set. Um, and I think that you want it to be the opposite of that. You want to set it and create something that's new or if it is reminiscent or nostalgic of something else, it's done in a way that's really fresh. And um, so yeah, it's at this point, I've had crossover success. I've had songs on pop radio, on hot AC, on country. I'll always take it when it comes, but I don't go in and set out to be the hit maker. I just want to write a great song and I want to connect with my 
friends that I'm writing it with and connect to a higher self or God or whatever it is in that room, that's what I'm there to do. I hesitated to use the term crossover, but since you used it, yeah. what does that mean to you exactly? Because it seems to me that genre doesn't really matter as much anymore. Yeah. If you're good, you're good, and people find it wherever it is. Everything has gone over to streaming, and um, people are just pulling up playlists based on mood, yeah. uh, which I love. That's kind of how I search for things. But respecting and staying true to a root of what made you fall in love with a genre in the first place is important. But um, I, it's not my Bible. Uh, I think that I am so influenced by so many genres, and I've never said otherwise. Like, from my church on, it's always been the kitchen sink. Success in music has given Morris a voice outside of it, too. She has been outspoken on social issues from abortion rights and gun control to the need for diversity in country music and defending trans youth. You use your voice and your platform to speak out on issues. When you started to do that, was there any trepidation of, I'm about to step in it, and now I'm gonna be in the middle of it? Yeah, I think it's gotten more galvanized since I've had my son that I am really trying to make something beyond music, and I want people to look around at my shows and realize, okay, this is really loving and safe and comfortable. Like no matter what walk of life or where you come from, I want you to be able to be safe at my show. And I'm willing to be uncomfortable to do that. Is there a risk to it? Because I would say I'm a fan of country music. Most artists aren't gonna sit down in an interview and talk about the things you talk about or to even go on social media and take on those issues because they say, maybe I believe that, maybe I do feel that way. It's just not worth the fight. It's not worth losing fans. Do you feel any hit from doing that? I mean, Honestly, like when I put my church out, I, I kind of got my first dose of criticism of people saying the song is like blasphemous at my church. And I remember, you know, oh wow, I'm really gonna have to have some thick skin to get through this if this is like the song that's already pissing people off in a very weird way. So I think from the get-go, I've gone through the chapters of, um, feeling just the, the criticism and knowing that, you know what, you're gonna piss people off either way, so you better let them know where you stand. And I think that, yeah, I've probably lost listeners along the way, um, but I think the ones I've gained and the ones I've retained, they know exactly who I am and what they're getting, and I see the residual effect of it now that time has passed of the positivity that it's ingrained into the, the fan base. Um, so even if you take a hit here and then, you know, here and there, it's, it's, uh, it's worth it. With the Humble Quest tour now wrapped, it seems Morris has a new itch. I wanna do Broadway. You do? Yeah. I've really tried to just scare myself the last few years. I like hosted a late night show, had never done that. Yeah. I flew with the Air Force Thunderbirds in like a fighter jet. <laughs> I'm talking to you, I'm just kidding. Um, That's an adventure. Yeah. Living her life with some spice and a kick. That is delicious, truly. Not just because you made it. Thank you for giving Cheers. me a bar to do it in. <laughs> Cheers again. Cheers. Thank you. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day, we start our morning so you can take on yours. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top Story with Todd Namas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now.
My nail tech knows how to keep it a little secret. At 24, Jack Harlow is a leader in rap's latest generation. His clever lyrics, rhythm-driven flow, and viral moment-making charm Love you. Bye. Love you. <laughs> have found him a massive following on social media. She brought a buddy in. What you studying? And Education. in real That's life. Money you think you're funny, huh? Yeah, I'm the funniest. So what about you? I think I'm coming in at a time where rap has gotten like very street again. I think I'm blessed to like have a spot right now because it's not a time where like it's like, yeah, let's let a, as many white boys in as we can. People are looking for authenticity. So how close is this to home? It's not far off. I think That's people right. relate to it though. A lot of the fans after the show, they talk to me and they're like, my garage looked just like that. Yeah. That meant so much to me. Yeah. Harlow currently is touring the country with his latest album, Come Home, The Kids Miss You. That title is a nod to his desire to get back to his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky after a dizzying rise to fame. I was spending so much time away from Kentucky that, uh, Something was calling me back and continues to. I recorded most of the album outside of Kentucky. And it also was kind of an inside joke that um, I'd seen my fans commenting it under everything. They would say it on some like distant wife energy. So <laughs> it's something that just felt appropriate for the time. Yeah. It became like, I just like titles that like signify an era. Mm -hmm. So speaking of, of where you are with the title of the album, you have exploded in the last couple of years in popularity and fame and success and all those measurables. How have you kept your head about you? I'd like to think the company I keep, maybe. It's a lot of my day ones and Team Strong. I feel like a lot of people around me have like strong integrity. On a day-to-day -day basis, they start to rub off on you. And a lot of my homeboys will still tell me exactly what they think or, you know, make fun of me, you know what I mean? It's not some weird hierarchy that makes me feel like I'm in a strange position. What about your family? They keep you grounded too? Yeah, definitely. They make it clear to me all the time that they like care about my happiness before anything. You know, you have a party, or maybe you'll have some people over. You have this moment where you're like, you know, all these people might not be here if I wasn't in the position I was in in life. Maybe they wouldn't be smiling as hard or maybe they wouldn't laugh as hard at every joke I'm making. And then so you start to account for everyone in your life that you feel like would be no matter what. Check this out. I'm from the, and I the son of small business owners, Harlow was raised in a home that was a little bit country, a little bit hip hop, with a mother who listened to Drake, Eminem, and Kanye West. So how early do you remember listening to hip hop with your mom? I always say my um, earliest memories when she went and bought late registration by Ye on disc played in the car and she's like you can't you can hear this but you can't say a lot of these words you're about to hear <laughs> so I just remember listening to late registration in the car with her it's definitely a a key moment for me she had a huge CD collection that I would sift through on my own you know without even being handed anything and just be like oh let me listen to this so definitely had my like dusting off the vinyl moments because of her but your dad's a country guy, right? Yeah. So you got these two influences. Yeah. Does that side show up in your I music so. at all? I think so. I think the storytelling, which is in both genres, but like the vibrato, <laughs> he likes to sing. He sang at their wedding. He sang Suspicious Minds by Elvis. So yeah. he, um, my dad's soulful, you know? So I definitely inherited some of that. and. Yeah, I love country. I don't know if I'd, I would make country, but there's like a lot of the emotion and storytelling and just the yearning I love about it. Got the girls like OMG, skaters like totally stand out geek, acting like you didn't notice me. Going by Mr. Harlow, Jack first showed promise with the mic in middle school, where he sold homemade mixtapes for $2 a pop. So your, your parents talk about when you were young, with the Guitar Hero mic, you're in your room writing rhymes, you're 12 yeah. years old. Is that about when you remember catching the bug of I think hip hop's my thing? 
hip hop wasn't like a niche genre by the time I was a teen. Right. It was everything. It was influencing the way we were dressing. Even as white kids, it was just like, it was the it. It was culture, period. So it's what you grow up in. It's like the kids that decided to go make a band are the ones that were doing something niche. So beyond the mixtapes that were very popular, what's the moment where you said, okay, now I know I can do this for a career? Of course there's like affirming moments, but like I can't pinpoint a time where I was like unsure, hmm. which is strange. But I think day after day, your self image is like, duh. Slowly you shape your reality into exactly what you expect for yourself. And of course there's bumps along the way to discourage you. There's tons of imposter syndrome from me. Really? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a black genre and I was white, so it's just, I am white. <laughs> so, you know, so many of your peers come from a different background and have different stories and you sit, feel like, you have moments where you feel like an outsider. So how did you get over that? How did you make that leap to feeling like you, yes, I should be here with these guys? You know, there's like those moments where you're in your head and then there's moments where you're out. And I think I was lucky enough to spend more time out of it. Not saying, I wonder how they're taking me. And more like, they f with me. You know, I'm good. I belong. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, I'm You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. NBC News, streaming free now. What's it like to walk out here, just wall to wall, floor to ceiling, people screaming and giving it all back to you? It's a high. On the right night, it's a complete reminder why I chase this. It's totally euphoric. The ones that hate me the most are just like me. It has been two years of highs for Jack Harlow. Back with the Remus, these the hip hop artist like who exploded Spencer. onto the scene in 2020. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. With the multi-platinum hit, What's Poppin'? My track record's so clean, they couldn't wait to just bash me. Then came a feature on the Lil Nas X hit, Industry Baby. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yes, I am. Followed this year by First Class, Harlow's first song to go to number one, with some help from an irresistible sample of Fergie's Glamorous. I'm as proud of First Class as any song, and it's not, it's not because of how big it is either, it's because of what it is. And what is it to you? It's just full circle. Anytime you can work your own personal DNA into your artistry. Hip hop artists have been doing it for years. They sample whatever their parents were playing in the house or they sample something they loved when they were six. But what's beautiful is there's kids right now that think that's the song and they hear glamorous and they're like, oh, is that a remix of yeah. First Class? Or, you know what I mean? So it's bringing it to a new generation. Fair to say that is a song that changed your life? Yeah, I would say so. Anytime you can get a song that just translates and touches that everyone knows, children know, you know, older people know, everyone knows. It's like, it does something to your career in that moment. And it's crazy because it's such a commercial record, 
But it's so full circle for me because I was paying homage when I did it, which is one of the pillars of hip hop is just sampling. It was like, we created this from the ground up. Me and my producers, I chose that song that I grew up on. I was like, let's make something of this. So it's rare, I think, that people, sometimes people's biggest commercial moments might not resonate in their heart. Mm. Even though it's success and they're grateful for it, it might not hit their heart like, mm. And I think people would be surprised. I know that first class is like soulful to me at least. You had a lot of influences growing up. I think that wouldn't be the first one most people would pick for you to come out with your big hit song, right? That's right. And that's what you want. You want something that's like, oh. Because I think when it came out, everyone was kind of like, damn, how's nobody done that? Mm. And that's what you want. You want one of those like, oh. You want, you want your peers to be like, oh, why didn't I think of that? So now that you decide that's the sample, what's your writing process? Yeah, well, it was like sort of a theme throughout the album is conversing with the sample so not just letting the sample be in the background or talking over it but rather like playing off of it like even my intro talk of the town we sample destiny's child and i'm talking to the sample so it became a theme throughout the album i think and then for the verses i think we hit the nail on the head with the hook so hard it just was so like there's something obvious about it, like, yeah, this is very easy to attach to. For the verses, I just wanted to rap mm. and say a few things that might even be polarizing, like certain lines where people were like, why would he say that? But it's like, that's the balance. It's curation. Like, anyone had the opportunity to sample Glamorous. Everyone is al allowed to do that. It's like, when you choose to do it and the timing, like, it's up to you. And shorty, like, you know that boy Jack is going places. I know. But his sights are set on more than music with an upcoming acting debut in a remake of the 1992 movie, White Men Can't Jump. You mean play basketball? Stepping into the role made famous by Woody Harrelson. How'd you play? Oh, the cameras will tell you I did well. <laughs> they only use it in the good takes, I'll tell you That's that. That's good. <laughs> and while he seemingly is everywhere these days, Harlow still is most at home on stage. Having the garage, the lights, the smoke, the lasers, it's all fire. I would have an empty stage and I perform with a white tee and shorts on. If the crowd is perfect, nothing else matters. The last time you were in Boston, you're in a little bar trying to scare up 100 people. Yeah. Right now, there are people sleeping on the sidewalk to get in tonight. There's so many levels you can reach, right? But truth be told, like when I look out, I'm like, this is really all you need to sell out a room means the world, like so many people don't get a chance to feel this. When you look ahead, what do you see? I think I still have a lot to prove in the music space. I think I've had like some amazing commercial success, but I think there's still stories and like art I wanna make that I haven't made. I think I still have to prove myself a little bit, which is exciting. I think that's how you wanna feel and that's how you stay hungry. So as my image and brand like continues to grow and people recognize me in the street whether they listen to my music or not. I really want to make sure that um, I leave behind the mark I want to leave on music and, and be a true storyteller and have music I'm really proud of that I can look back on and say, man, this helped someone. Mm. So I still have steps I want to take as just an artist, so I'm hungry. But in terms of trajectory, like, we're gunning for the top. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. NBC News, streaming free now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. Hi there all, 
of you watching today all day. We've got a great Pop Star Plus coming up for you. Coming up, the hilarious and super talented Amber Ruffin joins our What I Watch series, sharing the show that perfectly depicts her childhood. Plus, on the way in our My Pet Tale, our friend Judy Greer tells us about her great love for her dog. And then later, we're diving into some beloved shows, Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Gilmore Girls, so fans get ready. All of that is just ahead, but first, let's see what we have up on Popstar Plus. Amber Ruffin joined us for our What I Watch series, the comedian and actor who hosts her own talk show, The Amber Ruffin Show, it's very funny, was kind enough to tell us all about the long list of shows that she cannot stop watching. What I watch when I can't fall asleep is not a good question for me. I can always fall asleep. TV cannot help me. I'm great at sleeping. If America was in the Olympics for sleeping, I would represent our country and I would bring home the gold. I'm good at sleeping. What I watch when it's late at night. I like to watch every late night show. Every late night show there's ever been, I love to watch it. I love to watch the old late night shows, I love to watch it now. Only because when I was watching it, I never thought I would have a late night show. But when you have one, you watch it, it's different. That was great! You know what else is great? Finally making this show for you all! When I was preparing for this season of The Amber Ruffin Show, I watched, um, you know, I watched some Carol Burnett. I did, I watched some Dick Cavett. I watched some of those old, like, variety show, variety shows, and it was very clear how little you needed. <laughs> There's just people goofing around. And I was like, oh, you know, what a relief. Like those cool things we remember. We're just people goofing around. And that's a torch I'm willing to carry to this day. <laughs> what do I watch? I like to, when it's late, I do like to catch up. So when I'm catching up, I'm catching up on my favorite shows. And my favorite shows are Queens. I watched every last episode in real time. And I can't just be allotting time from eight to nine at night. I still have work to do. And then Abbott Elementary. Hey, yo. What it do, baby boobs? What y'all think about this little film crew I brought in here? Distracting, makes our jobs harder. But exciting. We about to be on TV. Because they are covering underfunded, poorly managed public schools in America. No press is bad press, Barb. Look at Mel Gibson. Still thriving. <laughs> Abbott Elementary is great. It is just very character driven. But I do think that Abbott Elementary found some very fun characters and leaned into them. And even though they're big characters, you haven't seen them before. You know, they found a new take on, you know, the bully and a new take on the nerd. Like, it's all so fresh. It's great. And Quinta is the best. What I watch when I need comfort food is the same thing everyone watches when they need comfort food. And that's Ted Lasso. It's the most comforting show on planet Earth. It's just as good as everybody says, but... The people who love Ted Lasso might not know that they also love Joe Para's show, Joe Para Talks With You. It is this very gentle comedian, and he just is living in, I think, Wisconsin, and, you know, being his gentle self, and, you know, whittling wood and stuff. And along those same lines, John Wilson, How To With John Wilson, is also a very comforting show where you know, not a lot happens, but it stays interesting, and then afterwards you feel a little happier. Those are the three shows. What I watch that might surprise people is, it shouldn't, but it always does, is Grey's Anatomy. Man, I've been watching Grey's Anatomy since the very beginning. It probably started, I don't know, at this point, 12, 18 years ago? It's a million years old. What I watch that reminds me of my childhood. I don't have an answer to this question, but what I don't watch that reminds me of my childhood is Pen15. Pen15 is that show about those two very nerdy nerds going through high school or junior high, but it was so exactly what it was like to be made fun of in school that it was, and I was made fun of like no one's business, that it, I just couldn't watch it. There were these boys in our grade who were not kind to Look, I need you to beat them up, yeah. Gigi. Like, it just needs to happen. Why should I? 
See, like I told you, he wouldn't care. This is literally like the worst day of my life, and he'll probably call me you just too. I, I tried, <laughs> I tried, and it was hilarious, but it just felt it, it was too soon. <laughs> It's too soon. It's too terrible. Too accurate a depiction. Could not watch it. Never will. Great show. I'll never see it. What I watch that I'm obsessed with right now. The Eyes of Tammy Faye. That was so good. I mean, also, I remember each one of those moments. But it was great. And then I kept forgetting that it was Jessica Chastain. She did such a good job. And Andrew Garfield. I was like, how are they doing this? It was a great movie. The eyes of Tammy Faye. But I want to laugh, I guess I watch Saturday Night Live. I'm a huge Saturday Night Live guy. Times a million, I love it. I've always loved it. And I'm not one of those freaking turds who's like, it used to be. SNL is good today. It was good yesterday. It was good when I was eight. It'll be good in eight more years. It'll always be good. SNL is always good. Oh, I love Amber. So interesting, too, to hear about the late night shows that Amber loved before landing her own. All right, thanks to uh, Amber for swinging by and hanging with us. We appreciate it. Coming up next, Judy Greer opens up about her dog, Mary, and how Mary's changed her life. How many of you were up there? At least, like, 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> how you doing, Lester? No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Good morning, out. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We need to pull up one extra chair at the table. We feel like we're right there with you. Just ahead in this half hour, we're going to introduce you to. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. This is what it looks and feels like. the latest film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We comes. begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. In our My Pet Tale series, we ask folks, of course, about their pets and how the pets that they've had have shaped their lives. Well, Judy Greer has a beloved dog named Mary, and we even learn just how much Mary helps Judy when she feels homesick. My uh, little furry creature, her name's Mary Richards, named after the title, Mary Tyler Moore's character from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. I'm too young to remember it being on television, but um, I watched it, I guess I saw it, you know, probably on like TV Land or one of the cable channels in some hotel room when I was on location working and feeling homesick and it made me so happy. I ordered all seasons on DVD and I used to travel with them so that I could watch them on my laptop when I was traveling for work because it was so comforting to me. I also really responded to the Mary Richards character because it was pretty groundbreaking when you think about it. I mean, this was a woman who broke up with her fiance, moved to the big city, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in order to pursue a career in broadcasting, which again, at the time was very unheard of. Well, I had the most uh, incredible male dog. His name was Buckley and I had him for years and he was my love and my roommate and my best friend. And you know, like all animals, unfortunately, he had to go live on the forever farm with his mom and about a year went by after Buckley left us and my vet Dr. Werber who I loved um, called me one day and was like hey I think it's time and I was like it's not time and he said just I work with a rescue they need a foster over Thanksgiving for this little dog would you just foster her and so that's when I picked up Mary and um, she basically curled up in a ball and just like I carried her around in a tote bag for two weeks and then it was the day before the adoption where I was supposed to take her and then all the people come and like 
I just lost my mind and I, I called my husband and I'm like, I can't, I can't get rid of her. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm about to shoot a live show. Fine, we can keep her. Like, please don't bother me at work anymore. So my timing was really good. But there was really something so special about having this little creature with me um, that did like, I think lower my blood pressure a lot. And I, I can't think of an um, exact moment in time when I knew she was staying with us, but it just felt like, oh, this is a good thing for me. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell people why it's so important to <laughs> adopt instead of shop. I mean, there's just so many animals that need homes. And there's even now so many like breed specific rescues that if you're like, well, I have to have this kind of breed of dog or I need, you know, hypoallergenic or whatever, like you can find that. There's just so many animals that like are needlessly euthanized. I mean, every day that could easily be adopted into homes. And I think that, you know, Fostering is such a great way to see how a pet's gonna work in your family. I mean, you can find such great animals and they're so happy to have a home and to not have to live in those cages. And Mary's like this tiny little cute, like teddy bear sort of fox raccoon looking dog, but she's really scary if she wants to be. So that took some getting used to and a lot of training. And she has chilled out a lot. She's really feeling self-confident. She's really feeling herself these days. Um, I started traveling with her when I go on location to shoot things and I brought her with me to New Orleans to shoot the thing about Pam and she went over everyone on set and in fact Renee Zellweger's character Pam Hupp has a dog and I can't tell you how many of my friends texted me after that first episode aired and they were like is Mary in the thing about Pam? Like, no, there is only room for one actress in this family. Um, but Mary was there and she was like running around and she was such a cutie. Sometimes when she's like a little judgmental and mean, I like to think that she's like my alter ego. My favorite thing with Mary, I love, I love going on really long walks and Mary really loves to go on long walks. We've walked seven miles in one day together. I mean, she'll just walk and walk and walk. I think she would walk until she would drop. The thing about Mary that's funny, like the thing about Pam, I just realized I said that. But the thing about Mary that's funny is that she plays really hard to get, but she's so tiny and cute that people keep like, they just keep wanting more of her. They keep wanting her. If she lets, if she lets you pet her once, then you just like want to keep petting her. But like the next day she might be like, I don't really like, I'm not like feeling you today. She really does march to the beat of her own drummer. And she's, uh, she's not someone that can be, pinned down, you know, like she might like you one day, but then she might not like you ever again. Every day is a new day with Mary. That's what I always tell people. Mary has made my life better in every single way. I used to get so homesick when I was on location. And now like when I have her with me, it's so much better. She's, she gives me a reason to get up in the morning and like on a day off. And sometimes I'm like, mm, I miss my husband and I'm homesick. She like, I think genuinely brings a lot of joy to work. Like she runs all around hair and makeup when we're in the trailer and she loves it and everyone brings treats and gives them to her. And she just, animals bring a lot of joy and they definitely like calm people down, I think. And so, um, yeah, she's just made my life better in every single way. Um, minus the dog hair that, <laughs> but she's little, it's not that bad. But I do usually have a lint roller with me. Thanks to Judy for sharing her great pet love. Coming up next, Melissa Joan Hart reminisces over Sabrina the Teenage Witch. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This is what it looks and feels like. What's the latest film? The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News. Streaming free now. NBC News. Streaming free now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? 
We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. And welcome back. Melissa Joan Hart was only 20 years old when she landed the role of Sabrina in the Sabrina the Teenage Witch show. And she sat down with us for our flashback series and shared what it was like to work on the 90s sitcom. I guess I would um, describe Sabrina as sort of a quintessential teen girl, doesn't want to draw too much attention to herself, but happens to wake up one morning with magical powers and has to deal. Wait. Don't come in here again. From now on, you use the freak's bathroom. I was 20 when I started it, and I actually created it. Um, it was an Archie comic, and my mom found the Archie comic book on a playground and she sold it to Viacom as a TV movie. And then my mom kept saying to Viacom, this would be a great series. And they were like, okay, uh, we'll see. And she kept saying, no, 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 it'd be a great series. I'm like, all right. And she was like, this would be a great series. And they cut it together. She cut it together into a uh, trailer and gave it to the network. And they were like, oh, this is a great idea for a series. She's like, yes, I know. <laughs> so the series came together that way. So uh, I never had an audition. It was my part created for me by my mother. The best part about playing her, so any actor, you know, we like to be actors because we like to kind of slip into lots of different skins and pretend to be lots of different people. And so having a series on the air for seven years for a lot of actors can be kind of tiresome because you play the same character for so long, you, 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 you want to stretch out a little more, you want to do a little more. But with Sabrina, it was great because I got to be everybody plus Sabrina. I got to be Cyrano. I got to be a trapeze artist. I got to be Cinderella. I got to be Rapunzel. I loved when she would take on some kind of personality or some other, um, you know, wardrobe or I was a snowman. I, I skied on Mars or, you know, so stuff like that. So that made it really exciting and different. And the actor in me loved that part. We'll see how they like it when they don't have somebody to enforce the law. I swear, the first person I run into. And Zelda? Congratulations. You're the new sheriff. With Sabrina, I was definitely acting because I was definitely playing um, against my type. I was never the wallflower. I was always the one doing a dance performance in the middle of the room or, you know, and here's Sabrina who just wants to be like left alone and quiet and don't let anyone see me. And I'm, you know, I'm going to hide over here. And I just, I didn't quite understand that. So for me, it wasn't the most fun, like the things we were talking about before, like the playing the other roles or getting dressed up in fun costumes. That was all really exciting for me, but the actual character herself, I didn't necessarily identify with. Sabrina, you usually have good ideas. What sort of a fundraiser would you suggest? Pancakes! <laughs> My favorite episode when we were filming it, and still to this day, I think, is probably the pancake episode. I think because it was probably my first time doing physical comedy, and I really loved it. I was like diving in trash cans and, tra and just playing like an addict like that, like just being like, I need a pancake, I need a pancake. And like, it was something I could really, for lack of, for, you know, here's a nice pun, but bite my teeth into. Like I could sink my teeth into like that character and the fun that I was having playing like a strung out teenager and a kid's sitcom, you know, it was like, it was really fun to play. Like, I know a lot of people get excited that Britney was on the show or NSYNC or Backstreet Boys, but I was always thrilled and I requested, as the executive producer, I could do that. Um, people like the Violent Femmes, Blondie, um, Johnny Mathis for a Christmas episode, you know? I mean, who doesn't want to be with Johnny Mathis when he's singing White Christmas? Lonnie Anderson we had the best time with, or Raquel Welch I had such a great time with. And, you know, all the men on set, of course, were like, oh my gosh, Raquel Welch, you know? And I'm like, I'm getting to act with her for a week. And it was really fun. Getting to go from everything, from pop stars to hardcore rock bands to athletes. Uh, Brady Anderson, I had a massive crush on. He was on the show. 
um, some of the guys from like uh, Baywatch and you know, like all these like hot, amazing actors and actresses. And it, it was just such fun because everybody wanted to come play with us. Everybody wanted to be on a magical show. Everybody's kids watched the show and wanted them on it or something. We had a great chemistry. Everyone was there for the right reasons. Everyone was there knowing that this was a great opportunity. Nobody took it for granted. Everyone rode that roller coaster as long as they could, you know, like knowing this is a, we're on a network show in the heyday of television, you know, not only making good money, but getting a lot of attention for our work. And that's what every actor dreams of, you know? And so we got to be in everybody's house every Friday night and people all across the world felt like they knew us. It's been decades of hearing, you know, I grew up with you. I heard Daniel Radcliffe say it, and I've heard like all these people say, I grew up with you. And you're like, what? Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's the best compliment because it just means that they allowed me in their home and I was there with them. A lot of people, I was there for the hard times. I was there when they're in the hospital. I was there when they were going through depression and felt alone. I was there when they couldn't, you know, I mean, not just me, the whole show, you know, and a lot of the show, a lot of people identify with Sabrina uh, because of bullying or because of um, feeling like an outsider, you know, they might not have magical powers, but they feel like an outsider. And so I think that the show gave so many people hope somewhere to turn to where they didn't feel alone and lonely. And I think that that was, that was like everything, you know. Thanks to Melissa for chatting with us. Last but not least, up next, Gilmore Girls star Kelly Bishop and her love for Emily Gilmore's combative attitude. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, Lester. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. All right, we're back. Kelly Bishop might be best known for her role on Gilmore Girls as Rory's harsh grandma, Emily, and she was kind enough to reflect on her time on the show with us. How would I describe Emily Gilmore? I used to say Emily Gilmore is a piece of work. She's um, no nonsense. Uh, she's smart. She's uh, conservative. She has values that are very kind of straight-laced. Uh, she's not foolish. She's uh, she's up with current things, but there's a certain uh, value system that she expects people to live by, particularly her daughter. What was my favorite part about Emily? Well, I like the clothes. Uh, they spent a lot of money on my wardrobe. I liked her attitude. I mean, she was so difficult and demanding and uh, hard to please as far as Lorelai was concerned. Uh, and what I really loved about that whole show was Amy Sherman Palladino's writing, because it's some of the best material I've, it's probably the best material I've ever done. And, uh, oh God, amazing. Funny, smart, on top of it, and as everybody knows, really fast. So uh, that was just one of the many favorite things. I love doing that show. Lauren and I, uh, the day we met, it was like, okay, I could do this. And she and I became so close and still are close. She really is like a daughter to me and I really am kind of like a mother to her. We don't spend a lot of time 
you know, talking to each other or texting or anything like that. But whenever we get together, it just clicks right in again. There's just a real love and trust and and pleasure. You know, we we have the same sense of humor. Uh, yeah, she's she's great. I'm I'm really crazy about Lauren. My all-time favorite episode. Actually, the one that tickles me the most because it was so different. There was one uh, where uh, Richard, my husband's uh, mother, who was a very difficult woman, uh, had passed away. And uh, I found, if I recall correctly, I found a letter that she had written to him the night before our wedding, I think, begging him not to marry me. I know that the timing of this is particularly awkward since you are to be married tomorrow. No way! But your happiness is too important to me, so timing be damned. She wanted Dad to leave you at the altar. She begged him to leave me at the altar. She begged him in writing, and then she saved the carbon. And uh, that sort of sent me off. He wasn't there to support me because he was so grieving for his mother that during that episode I was drinking. There, I, there was even one scene where I was smoking a cigarette. I, I called it my the Tennessee Williams episode for me. Who was that at the door? It was Jason. Dad needs to sign something. Uh-huh. I mean, she was just out there. She was so un-Emily. Uh, that was great fun. I really had fun doing that one. There were a few episodes that I really liked, but that one was just such a departure. The zingers and the put-downs. Oh, boy. Uh, actually, one of my first ones, one of the reasons I loved the pilot script so much, I, I couldn't believe this pilot script when I got it. It was so funny. And I had no idea who any of these people were or, or who the writer was, anything like that. It's when uh, Lorelai comes to see her parents in the pilot script, obviously to ask for money for Rory's education. And uh, I opened the door and I said something to the effect of, is it Christmas? Hi, Mom. Lorelei. My goodness, this is a surprise. Is it Easter already? <laughs> or is it Easter? It was some holiday which was indicative of perfect writing of saying that's how often they saw each other. It was on, on holidays, Christmas, Easter, whatever it was. And then uh, Richard, my husband's character, comes in sometime later after we've done this scene and he basically does the same thing with a different holiday. Hi, Dad. What is it? Christmas already? Lorelai was taking a business class at the college today and decided to drop in to see us. Favorite moments with Ed Herman. I just loved working with him. We really liked each other so much. I know, I know one of my favorite uh, scenes with him was when we did renew our vows and he, we danced to the song Bill and he said today, I mean, that was your favorite, you know, your favorite song and today you can call me Bill. Emily would tease me saying, if only your name was Bill, then this could be our song. Well, Emily, for tonight, and tonight only, my name is Bill, and this is our song. That was wonderful. You know, uh, he was such a good actor and very generous, very professional, but just a sweet, good man. Why is it still cooking? First of all, it's very intelligent. I mean, if you the smarter you are, the more you get it. And it's fast, and so you gotta pay attention. You don't have much time to laugh because you gotta catch up with what's going on. Um, it's funny. I mean, it's, it really is a funny show. But what I decided was that there's really an innate sweetness about it, which sounds kind of icky, but it's not that. There's a, there's a decency about it. Um, and one of the things that men started, when men started watching it, which they weren't inclined to because it was Gilmore Girls and all that sort of thing, uh, is that if you look at the male characters in that show, there's no nasty guy, there's no jerk, there's no misogynist, uh, there's no violence. They're just trying to make their way in the world like all the rest of us. And so there's uh, what there is basically is an innate decency about these people. They're good people. There's, some of them are very strange, but they're they're good. And I heard a wonderful uh, story last year sometime that very often um, when the troops come back from maneuvers in places like Afghanistan and places that we you know, hear too much about, they very often sit down and watch Gilmore Girls. 
and I think it's because it's a feel-good place. It's like this is what America is supposed to be. Great to revisit memories like that. All right, that's going to do it. Thanks for tuning in to Popstar today. As always, we're so glad you joined us. Come back tomorrow and hang out with us again. Same time, same place. See you then. Our today food guest, Nadia Katerina Muna, who is incredible, also known as the Pasta Queen. She's taken social media by storm thanks to her tasty Italian recipes and hilarious videos, earning more than 43 million likes on TikTok. Nadia is here to tell us a little bit more about this breakfast dish from the new cookbook, which I told her I was going to move a lot of units today. Yes. Where's the book, oh, Nadia? You, you, you got to have, have the book. book. Garçon. Here's the book, the Pasta Queen, a just gorgeous cookbook. Nadia, good to see you. So you said your daughter uh, introduced you to the Tiki Talkie. Yes. You see it and there's kids dancing. Yes. And how did you get into, how did you become a cook and a queen of it? All? As, a, as I was about to delete the app off my right, phone, good, I good. stumbled upon a blasphemous lasagna. Someone claiming to have made the perfect lasagna. And it was terrible. It was terrible. And you knew you had to get on the medium. It was to... a mission. It kind of ignited the fire <laughs> within me. <laughs> mission. All right, so what do we have here? And how, what is this breakfast pasta? So we are us? making a frittata di pasta. OK. This is a Neapolitan special. Every family has their own version. Today we're making a pasta cake made out of salami, eggs, cheeses. If I go to the streets pepper. of Naples, is this a street food? This is Italian street food. Okay. Well, let's and cut the salami. Best. Yes. That's a very large salami there. It what, is. That, can you use, substitute that for any sort of meat? Yes. Or? You can do bacon, seasoned bacon. You can do mortadella, mm -hmm. uh, anything. And also, it's beautiful because you can use any cheeses you want. Mm. Yep. I like fontina, Swiss cheese, provolone. Of course you do. Today we're using parmigiano and mozzarella. Okay, should I whip these eggs up? So now we're adding the salami. Hoda and Savannah are here enjoying Look at, the look at him. Hi. He's Hi. doing all the work. Yep. Yeah, no. No. Now make my nonna proud. Okay, She's good. watching. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, no. Oh. And yes. the parmigiana. Yes. Okay. Great. It's beautiful. So we Gorgeous. have the spaghetti. Yep. These have basically been um, uh, kind of like tossed in with butter so that they're ready to be put into an oiled pan. Mm -hmm. And you really want to kind of like make sure that they're even. So this could have been last night's leftover like spaghetti, right? This is the perfect leftover. You can use short pasta, long yeah. pasta. So no, any old pasta would work. Any okay. old pasta yeah. would work. Yeah, okay. It's perfect. Do you like it's doing like the TikTok you videos? Oh, oh you're sweet. Oh. Oh. That's so nice. Your husband's oh. taking away. Yeah. Your Don't said, worry, your man. Said something Stop cooking in the kitchen. What did you say? You were the official? Chief <laughs> pasta tester. Yes. Just like you are. Chief pasta tester. The CPT. Yes, yes, just like me. All right, so we're cooking this. You want to get this crispy, right? So, do so you... now you pour this on. Should I do that now? Okay. Yes. Great. So this is the... Look at him. We should oh. hire him. There we go. <laughs> So is that egg and cheese? This is egg, yeah. cheese, cheese, mozzarella, mm -hmm. pepper, salt, and salami. Yeah. Do, you, do you need to press so it you, down at all? You, you just move it a little bit so that you make sure that the sauce goes everywhere. Okay. And then you let it go on a low flame for about 10 minutes until it kind of sets. How was it? Mm -hmm. Delish. You like it? Gorgeous. Yeah. Did you make this? Yeah, I just just like this it. Could well I make it? I don't know. Is this you hard? Know. Is this a difficult dish for Let people to make? Let me wait. Uh, we're not done okay, yet. No. Uh, yeah. So, so okay. this is the thing. Once this is cooked at the bottom, yes. yep. the bottom becomes the top. Uh, just sometimes oh, okay, in okay, people, okay. you know, in life, uh, you know, when you're at the mm. bottom, all of a sudden you're at the top. Uh, That's tasty. Yeah. So now this was the base, and we flipped pour it. Pour a little oh, marinara yeah. over it. But yeah. how did you flip it? You just, like... So Let basically, yeah. you use uh, anybody as a yeah. sheet pan, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you put it on top like that. Oh, oh, oh and then flip it. Yes. Yes. That's how I always wanted it. See, then you slide tricky. it back in. And then, and then you, you let the it cook at the bottom for another ah, five minutes. Okay. So Grazie, it's, Nadia. It's gorgeous. No, just like you are. We're not done. We're not done. <laughs> what, do you ever drizzle a little sauce on this? Like a little marinara, a little something on top? If no. You want to, no. No, Carson. No. Absolutely not. So my 13 year old, when he wakes up and doesn't eat breakfast, this is like a piece of pizza. This is a breakfast. Hey, Dad, I'll see you later. Just take it with you. This is like hiking food, picnic food. Yeah. You can eat it cold, hot. Whichever way you like. Yeah, Love it. it's kind of like a quiche. Yes. But with pasta. Yes, cool. exactly. How much fun did you have making the cookbook? You have over 100 pasta recipes in there. And, and, and what is your favorite of all 100? The lasagna from my nonna. 
That's oh. your best. Okay. It's the top. If I was stranded on a deserted island, I would want to have that with me. Right. Mm -hmm. It's substantial. I like well, that. Well, congratulations. You know, Thanks for I don't want aglio olio. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yes. Grazie, Nadia. Thank Cook you for Marquez. having me. The pasta queen. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Oda. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Food is where you can get this recipe. Pick up the book. There's hundreds of Ooh. wonderful recipes and photographs of your family are beautiful, too. Thank you, Nadia. All right. Today we are in for a treat because our pal Scott Conant is cooking for us. Scott is hosting Peroni's Taste of Italy tomorrow night at the 15th annual New York City Wine and Food Festival where 100% of the net proceeds will benefit God's love we deliver. Hey, Scott, good to see you, man. Good to be here. Thank you for having so me. So it's you and Alex Gornicelli. Is that me and, me and Alex, my That's good true. friend Come Alex. On. We're going to have a blast. That's a party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah, event is a party. She's she's always so much fun. She's I love wild. her so much. And she is uh, she's such a great inspiration. She is just blowing up lately. So mm -hmm. we're uh, we're going to have a good time. Cool. All right. Night. What are we good. Yeah, we're going to make some pasta. I got penne. It's cooking over there. We have pancetta, butternut squash. Mm -hmm. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this butternut squash. I think a lot of people get... You know, it's a little bit of a challenge, butternut squash. You have to peel it. Mm -hmm. You have to take the seeds out of the mm -hmm. interior. So I always say there's two layers on that that you really want to get rid of, that, that exterior, and then there's a whitish layer. You want to get, get rid, rid of that, that as much as possible. And then cut it into, like, one-inch chunks, okay. just like this. Very simply put it on a sheet tray, a little bit of salt, Classic. Mm -hmm. a little bit of olive yeah, oil. And you could toss it in a bowl and then put it together. Stick I it roast in the that oven. in like a 400 degree oven oh. for about 20 minutes or oh, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I really like that hard exterior. Then Got I it. take this pancetta, so raw pancetta. Look We're gonna that. dice it just like this and then Cook it in this pan that we have here. I already have some, okay, some in there. Okay, so you there. chop it up into chop little Chop it up pieces. into little pieces, and then we're going to let that render out quite a Did bit. Did you put olive oil, or is that just the fat? I added a touch of olive okay. oil to it just to get it going. Mm -hmm. A little crispy pancetta is so good on anything, right? Give us a little texture. Yeah, and I was, I was just saying to Hoda that not a single calorie in this pancetta. Yes. You know, that's right? the Look good, at that. The, yeah, that's that special This is the special, good, yeah, the special stuff. Right. We're going to let that render out and get a little bit crispy. And, and then, then we're going to add uh, a little bit of sage. Sage, pancetta, I mean, all these autumnal that? flavors. Uh, what is this? That's uh, a little bit of sliced shallot. A okay. pinch of crushed red pepper. Beautiful. I'm just going to let that mm. cook until, that really? until it looks like this. Okay. This is getting a little darker than I'd like it to be. Okay. What we can do is take this penne right uh -huh. out. You see. And I utilize that cooking liquid as well. So use that pasta water in there? That's pasta water. Yeah. So that pasta water, what happens is, this is the same pasta water. And then as I cook that down, it's going to continue cooking the pasta about the rest of the way. So I cook the pasta about 90% of the way here. Uh, I finish it in this pasta cooking liquid. Do you like the liquid. pasta al dente or regular? I like it al dente. Everyone likes it chewy. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's the, you, it's the texture that's the so texture, delicious. The texture, you like a little bite? A little, a little bite, yeah. Okay. Do you do what I do, Scott? Do you just pull one out and try it and try to it. know what's done? Yeah. Okay, good. I don't I take the spaghetti and throw it against no, no, the no. wall. Does anyone yeah. actually do that or not? I mean, somebody must do it. Yeah, some. At mm. some point, somebody did. That butternut it's, squash is amazing. The butternut squash is oh. so good. Mm. That concentration of flavor. Oh, mm. Something as simple as throwing it in the oven, it really, it's great. Mm. I do it with broccoli and cauliflower. Really? Autumn, autumn squashes, all that stuff. It's oh, great. Oh, yum. Yeah. Anything more you can tell us about you and Alex and the event? Oh, my God. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. Mm. I don't even know how many restaurants are participating. It's a, it's a ton of restaurants. I think there's still some tickets available, mm -hmm. which is the fun part. Alex is going to uh, sing a song, I think, at some point. Is she? Yeah, I'm really? putting her on the spot now. Oh. I hope she's watching this. I think mm -hmm. she's going to. There's some, <laughs> there's some of those Italian classics, you know. Mm -hmm. da, 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 yeah, right? yeah. yeah, like the Godfather. There you yeah. go. Cool. <laughs> You're tan. Where were you? I live in Arizona. Oh, well, oh, gotcha. Yeah. Always tan. Right. You're around tan. <laughs> yeah. Cool. For this delicious recipe, and man, is it good. Head to today.com slash food. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece to the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. You'll get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Uh, Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride.
This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> no stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. The one and only Bobby Flay. For decades, we've watched him create some of our favorite dishes on countless TV shows and more than a dozen cookbooks. His latest is called Sundays with Sophie, and it takes us inside the Flay family kitchen, a collection of dishes inspired by meals with his daughter, Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this has got to be near and dear to you. You're, like, does Sophie cook too? You've been teaching her your skills? Yes, yeah, she, she does. So Sundays with Sophie, Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. The, oh. the idea is that it's, you know, it's Sunday meals or just meals for the family around the table. And actually, I, I devised a lot of these recipes during the quarantine because, like everybody else, I was cooking three meals a day at home. And so the recipes are incredibly simple, and they're really built for the home cook. Oh, good. I love that. Okay, yeah. simple. You had me at hello. Okay. Talk about this poached egg. This okay. is cacio pepe poached eggs. Coche, uh, cacio pepe <laughs> poached eggs. So cacio pepe simply means cheese and pepper. Yes. We usually see it classically on pasta. Yeah. But everybody's cacio pepe everything now, at this point. Now, is this point. a breakfast, or is this, I know, is this breakfast, or is this dinner? Um, no, like, this, this, is like, this is like breakfast or brunch, or okay. like it could definitely be like a late night. Listen, I, I, there's plenty of times I love I love, I love uh, you know, eggs for dinner. Me too. And so basically what I do is I make a vinaigrette. This is very, okay. very simple. So it's some white vinegar, some honey, some shallots, mm -hmm. okay? This reminds me of when we did our cooking thing together. I know, remember? I know. I know. Do you want me to stir that? I can do that yeah, now. Yeah, sure, go right ahead. Like. Exactly. <laughs> Look at me whisking. And then some olive oil. And then we're going to add some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, of course. And then some mm. cracked black pepper. So okay. there, there's the cheese, there's the cacio and the pepe, so to speak. I mean, this is black delicious pepper. right here. And this is our little dressing. Exactly. Okay. There you go. So then we're going to poach some eggs. And a lot of people are. Cont are I'm intimidated. Intimidated. All right, show me. So it's, it's two ingredients one of them is water, the <laughs> other is some vinegar. Okay. okay. And the vinegar is going to help the egg. This is my big word of the day coagulate the egg. Oh, so okay. So it kind of breathes mm -hmm. it to a little bit. Do you guys know how to poach an egg? Al, I know no, you. No. Raise no. your hand if you can poach no, an egg. Al can. Oh, oh I, okay, yeah. Al poaches eggs with his eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to just, and, and, and here's a little tip. I, I crack the eggs and I first put it into a little ramekin because mm -hmm. if I break it, I don't want to put it in here. Oh, true. And a lot of times you do that if you just, you just kind of go right into the water. Okay. So we're going to let those poach. They poach for, you know, just like, a, I don't know, three or four minutes. And, and, and the best thing to do is kind of just do a little whirlpool so it gets a, gets a okay. really beautiful shape. Seems like it'd be hard to get those out. Oh, no, they come them. right out. Really? As okay. You, <laughs> as, as soon as you can get them out, you just take them out. It's very, very simple. Okay. Should be no problem. Okay. okay. We have some toast over here. All right. Okay. So. Um, sourdough bread, some kind of country loaf. Mm -hmm. I like mine like slightly thick, maybe, I don't know, maybe an, sort of like uh, an inch and a half or so, or so like that. And then just some, you know, good quality olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread. Yeah. And then some salt and pepper. And this is one of the things that people forget when they're making toast, don't forget to season it as well. Okay. Salt and okay. pepper your toast. Like bring out the flavor of that delicious oh, yeah, bread I, that I you have. I never do that. Okay. Exactly. Good call. Okay. So we have the toast. I put a little more. I, I, I take, you just roast this in the oven, or you I'm put sorry, this in like yeah. the toaster oven? So you can oven. put it in the oven. You can put it under the broiler, or okay. you can just put it in the toaster. Got it. I think a toaster is probably the <laughs> best case okay. scenario, yeah. right? It's it works. Easy. What's happening over here? Should we get these out? Uh, you can do that if you want, but we're down here. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just want, concerned about that. This is this is Savannah <laughs> in the kitchen, right here. Distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to Food Network. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some a garlic clove, and I just rub the garlic clove a little bit on, okay. the, on the bread, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yep. You know, this is a very savory meal. A little more olive oil, mm. and then we take our poached eggs, and we put the poached eggs right on top. Whoops! Mm. Right on top of our our bread. Okay. And then we take our dressing. Yes. Okay. Now this is the good stuff. And this Dressing's is where fantastic. this is where all the flavor mm -hmm. comes in. Okay. Oh yeah. Just How pour that taste, you guys? right over there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Same. Finished it. Really good. Some Parmigiano. Oh man. Oh. Yeah. Some fresh chives. I mean, come on. Can you make the dressing ahead of time? Though? Absolutely. And of course, you can use it for salads. Or you I was can about put it on to ask that. Vegetables. Anything. Absolutely. Very, very versatile. Okay. But this is what I was doing at home. It's like you know, so during, yummy. you're at home. Like you just take the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and you make dishes. And, and this, this was one of them. Okay. Well, that looks. Should I have a bite? Yeah. I'm so worried about those other Dive eggs. in and go grab them. Okay, I just don't want to You got to cut okay, it. Okay, here we go. 
You, someone else can have to read. Gets this. gooey. Gets gooey. Uh huh. Gets gooey. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Well, yeah, Bobby. Wow, Bobby. That's a GIF right there. <laughs> Someone's working on it. You can catch wow. Bobby again on, on our hour. third hour. You can also get us recipes. Today.com slash food. Also, catch Bobby's Triple Threat tonight on Food Network. Don't forget the go book. Oh, yes. Sundays with Sophie. Yes, yeah, Sundays with Sophie and Triple Threat tonight at 9. We'll mm -hmm. see you there. On sale today. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop start, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. The one, the only Giada De Laurentiis, the famed chef and founder of the website and blog, Jadzi. Did I say that right? Yeah. That's so cute. Jadzi is here with a simple, flavorful recipe for pasta zozona. Jada, good morning. Hi. I, it has been a thousand years since we saw you in I know. person. It's How's been everything? A hot second. It's been great. It's been great. How's the fam? The fam's great. Yeah. Um, Jade started ninth grade, so I we're in high school now. That. Oh my gosh! So the days of like a little kid wow. are over, as you probably know. Well, oh, their kids are getting older. They're getting older. Um, oh, and yeah, and so I tonight I'm gonna jet off to Italy, I'm gonna go to Rome and oh. Milan and see some you know farmers and some uh, families that you know make the ingredients. I love when you go to Italy because then you come back and you've learned all kinds yes, of new stuff. Yes, and I collect stuff. all this stuff and curate it. And I already Jonesy. predicted that the tasters will have clean plate Half clubs. Halfway there. Right off the board. Well, let's, the let's show you how to delicious. make it then. What do we do? Okay. Pasta zona. So I heard, I heard you've been cooking. Well, <laughs> that's a stretch, but no, okay. I have learned. I, I okay. can do well, a couple can, things. Can you hold a knife and chop this for I me? I think so. Or do you want me to do it? How do you want it chopped? Like that. Oh. Well, it's not going to be that good. Just watch your fingers, whatever you do. I know. That's what everyone says. This is a shallot. Yes. Um, I like the shallots because they're a little bit sweeter, but you could definitely use just a regular okay. onion if you wanted to. Okay, but let's pretend I did this. Okay, that's great. Perfect. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, Throw okay, it in there. there. Okay. Okay. No, no, wait, 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 wait. I got to take the, the pancetta out. So this oh. is pancetta. So this, the pancetta this, is coming out. Wait, oh, this man. pasta is a mashup of two of Rome's classic pastas, okay? okay? Um, carbonara, which we all know is creamy. Hold on, hold yes, on. delicious. Here, dump it in there. Yeah, I was just like okay. taking an hour. Well, usually, okay. <laughs> usually I do this all in one okay. pan, but you know, today. Okay. Okay, great. That smells <laughs> okay. good. Okay, what is this, sausage? Yeah, and this Yum. is sausage. So it's a mashup of carbonara yeah. and okay. amatriciana, both okay. Roman dishes. Okay. One is a tomato based, and one is like sort of a creamy egg based, okay. right? Okay, Would you so use you cook the these together. Pancetta plate, or whatever this is called, saucepan, if yeah. you can normalize. Yes, so I use okay. one skillet okay. to right. do everything. That's, what, some I of the fat from the <laughs> That's what I was trying to articulate. Some of the fat from the pancetta cooks the onion. Yeah, I like that. Okay, because the shallot. Okay. okay. What about So then, this? you can dump the rest of the shallot in here. Okay. This is great, because just dump and stir for you. It's I know, it is. Okay. I do like Garlic. That. Garlic, okay. Big old whole Just clothes. have your husband prep it all for you, and I then know. you can come home and put mean, it together. Seriously. Right? Okay, wait a minute. Tomatoes first. Give oh, me the why? Why does that matter, even? So that, I'm going to show you. 
Yes, the whole thing. So you see how smooth this is? Mm. So in, Ita in Italy, we call this a passata. Mm -hmm. So it's basically no seeds in it. Oh. It's very creamy. Yeah, it you looks... buy it just like this. Okay, it looks like ketchup, but isn't. But isn't ketchup, okay. I promise. So I'm warming this up, and then I add the spicy stuff. Yeah, so this is Calabrian chili, mm -hmm. which you may have heard of. You guys in all may have heard of it now. It's very popular these days. Delish. We're, we're too busy eating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Anyway, this makes it spicy, and mm. it's going to make it really spicy, because that's a lot of Calabrian chili. Okay. But you could use red pepper flakes yeah. in place of it. But this has more of like a, a balancing sweet to find, and though? spicy. All these fancy ingredients you've got. Can we find that? Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. On Jodzy.com. Okay, oh, moving on. Oh, yeah, oh on. my God. Shame move on. But you can find okay. it other places. Now, what too. are these cute little pasta? Okay, so look at this I'm little really pasta. This pasta. Aren't they the cutest? So these are known as Nodi Marini. So they're from Marine. Naples. Okay. And you see, they look like a little knot. I love them. Yeah. Aren't they cute? Marine. Marine. They're so like little donuts. I found them in Naples a few years ago, and then I started, you know. Bring them back for everybody okay. to have a little taste it. of Italy. Okay. Okay. Sauce is cooking. It yeah. takes about ten minutes, but on this burner it might take five. Okay. Um, anyhow, so that all cooks together. So this is the tricky part, right? The, here. I did not see eggs coming. Well, because I said it was a mashup between carbonara yeah, that, okay. and a matriciana. Matriciana right. has pancetta. It's a tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. Carbonara, as we all know. Okay. So how does yeah. this get into it? So it got into the bowl. Oh, no, I no, separated no, I mean, how the eggs. Egg yes. Get into the recipe. <laughs> yes, because it's, it's a mashup of car carbonara has eggs. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, go. Okay. What, so whisk? You're, yes, you're gonna break up and whisk the three yolks. Look at this, y'all. Uh, look at you whisking. See, see look how good you are, yo. I think you've learned a thing or two. I've whisked. I've whisked. Okay, okay, ready? So now we're gonna add pecorino, half a cup. Mm. And one cup of Parmigiano de Giano. Oh my gosh, now we're getting to it. Okay, so this is the trick right here. Okay. Because if you add this directly into here, it's what this. happens? It's thick and lumpy. Well, yeah. you, end up lumpy. With, you end up with scrambled eggs. Right, right, Which right, you don't right, want. Right, okay, no, so no. here we go. This is a problem. It's okay. This is my issue Just with water. It's okay, okay. it's okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Is that warm Slowly, water? this is pasta water. Oh, pasta. So we're using oh, it when so you cook the pasta, reserve about a quarter cup, mm -hmm. and you're going to use hot pasta water to break this up and create a creamy sauce slowly. So when you add this. It's really bugging me. Okay, yeah. Don't you always want to get that out of there? I don't yeah. understand. What would you do? It makes no sense. The whisk. Right? It always happens with there the you whisk. Go. Okay. It's totally fine. <laughs> okay. Don't take okay. it out on the whisk. It's totally fine. Okay. Leave the whisk okay. alone. Okay. Okay. okay, so you're going to use this instead, yes. and you're just oh. going to continue okay. to mix Sorry. it. we got to keep mixing it. Well, mix, and mix and add. <laughs> mix and add. Mix okay. and add. Okay, I'm so now glad gonna... they gave us so long for this segment. Yeah, there we go. And that's it. So that this is. This oh, is now the part. we can get that yeah, in there. Yeah, so now you can get this back in there. All right, we're back to the. And ones. I'm going to add the pasta in the sauce. Remember when you had that cooking show, Samantha? <laughs> Remember, <laughs> it's coming back for the holidays. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh ye of little faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys! You should come on it, actually, Jada. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'd love to. Now that you've invited, now that, you, now that you've invited me, I can come on yes. it. Okay, okay. Now what? Okay, so now look. You ready? Yeah. Okay, off the heat. So we're going to turn the heat off. Yes. You want to do this off the heat? Go ahead and add it. And then you pour it in. This is exciting. I, there I we really go. didn't see this coming in the recipe. Well, what does it go. really add to it? Just like a thicker sauce? It creates creaminess. creaminess. Go grab a bowl and taste okay, it. Okay, I will. I will. And then it's we finish there. it. So we basically do this okay. off the heat. You got to do this yes. off the heat so you don't scramble the eggs. It just keep tossing it, and yep. the eggs get cooked by the boiling hot water. Mm. Mm. God, it's and then so the heat of the pan. This is so good. Oh, good. See, look. Good, good, good. What is, what is that? Then a little bit of pancetta to finish oh, it off. Pancetta. Mm. Did you want to taste? No, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> oh, that's so yummy. Mm. And then a little bit more cheese to finish okay. it. And we're done. Okay. Pasta de Jonna. With Naughty Marini. Jonna, thank you. But wait, you think more. I could do this? <laughs> you got it. She's back in our third hour with a creative spin on a lasagna and a delicious Italian dessert. Mm. You can get Giada's recipes and more at today.com slash food. Giazzi, thank you for coming. We Don't love you. We're back in a moment. This is today on NBC. Thank you, Delicious. NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You get one beautiful life to live. 
What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. NBC News, streaming free now. If you planned on ordering Italian tonight, watch this one first. We're going to show you how to make a satisfying spaghetti dish with the ingredients that are already in your kitchen. It's a recipe from the new book, Dinner in One, by New York Times food columnist Melissa Clark. Melissa makes Hello. everything easy, Bobby. Bobby, do you cook? Okay. Uh, I, I do not okay. cook. I <laughs> Melissa, cook we're going to teach you, you right now. Order. Exactly. Can we're going to teach you. Okay. okay. Okay, so we're going to make, we are making a pasta carbonara takeoff. Okay. So this is I'm an easier version because we're going to do everything in one pan. Wow. I like it. Simple. Yeah, exactly. That's the in it's one. Just because everybody, you know, people who love to cook still don't like to do dishes. Yes, so yes. this book is going to take care of that for you. So eggs and pasta and bacon. I'm so I confused know. right now. I know. You're, you're thinking, is it breakfast time or what? Yeah. This is a traditional carbonara combination, but okay. what I'm doing is doing it in one pan, and I'm going to add some fresh greens to make it a little lighter. Okay. Eggs. All right. So will you, will you beat those for me? You can do that. How right? many? Do I, five. So I have, um, I have some eggs, and I have some I don't extra know to, egg yolks. Is it just? Is this? Okay, do, that's not beating. No, I told you I can't cook. But we're going to. And then I would get it on our clothes, and it'd be a whole thing. I know. That's the thing about cooking. It can be a little messy. Okay. Now, okay, I'm going to use two kinds of cheese right here. Now, Bobby, okay. yes. this yeah. one is the Parmesan. Put it right in. How much? Okay. All the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. thing. Okay. Yeah, we want a lot of cheese. We're going at it. Is that your wedding ring, the red one? It is. Oh, that's well, nice. Well, because it's rubber, and I thought I was cooking today, <laughs> uh, and I didn't want to... You wanted to slip in an okay. extra, so we yes. get messy. Nice. They're chewy. Okay. okay, and then, Hoda, I've got also some um, pecorino. I'm pecorino. using two kinds of cheese look at all, look at to that. make it... One <laughs> is a little nutty, one is a little salty. Okay. There's a cheese called pecorino. Pecorino, <laughs> exactly, because guess what? It's that made from sheep. expensive. Oh. All right, now we're going to add some pepper and some salt, okay. and then this is bacon. Oh, so, yeah. Now we're kind of bacon regular. So, this is regular bacon. Mm, um, you'd use good. pancetta if you were in Italy, but okay. use whatever whatever kind. And I have some mm -hmm. onion right here. Mm, and that. the onion is cooking in the bacon fat. Oh, and that is best. part of what's going to make it mm. so delicious. I is that's going to have that Holy flavor moly. throughout it the whole thing. It smells so good. Exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, Can I ask here. you a silly question? Yeah. Did you cook the bacon and then chop it up, or did you chop no, it up? No, I chopped it first. And that way you don't have to take it out of the pan. And it's just it's neater that way. All right, now here is the part that I love. So to make this a one-pot meal, we're going to cook the pasta in with the bacon. You're going to boil it in here? We're going to boil it in here instead of messing up another pot. What? And this is also, what's so great about this is that it allows the pasta to take on a lot of flavor from the bacon because okay. it's absorbing it, right? So we're going to add some water right here. Okay. Oops. And, and you just then, cover it. Should it be all covered. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna okay. um, first we're gonna just let it simmer for a few minutes, then we cover it. Okay. And then I'm gonna add a little more salt. Okay. I'm so intrigued by breakfast I foods know. and pasta. I, I know, isn't it great? Okay. And um, and then another great thing about this also is that you can you have a lot of control over it because you're standing right here, so you know when it's perfectly al, al dente. Okay. So you know when it's just right. So this is what it looks like. This takes about 10 minutes, and afterwards, this is what you get. Do you throw it so, against the wall to see if it's done? That's what my grandma always told me. You want to try it? it? You want to try it? it? <laughs> But, yeah, that was not going to work. <laughs> if you do this one, you're just going to mess up your wall. Okay. It's definitely done. Okay. All right, so just give it a little just stir. Swirl it around. Exactly. Now, what about the egg mixture yeah, with so all the... so we have the egg oh, right here. Oh, there it is. And then this is what you do. You add it. So this is off the heat at this point, and the okay. pasta is hot. It's still hot, yeah. So it's going to cook the egg. You're not, you don't have raw egg here. You have um, the pasta cooks it immediately. It coats it. It makes this beautiful, silky sauce. Oh, look at that. You're doing that perfectly. Oh, my oh, God. So you just keep pushing it around? No. But when you no, do, I you do know not. what you're doing. Okay, so you keep pushing it yeah, around until it's it all around. over. Yeah, and then, okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to, okay. so this is another thing that they do okay. not do with carbonara in Italy. They mm -hmm. do not add fresh greens. Oh, you add it And here? I'm going to add all, yeah, so I have the some spin. Yeah, throw it all the in. The whole thing? The whole thing because that's I That's what I said about the cheese. I couldn't exactly. believe it. Exactly. I know, isn't it amazing, though, and because it thing? absorbs it. What's this? And that is um, parsley. Parsley. And basil. And basil. Oh, I love basil. And yeah, and we're just making a slightly fresher, lighter version. So keep mixing, mixing. Keep mixing. And another we thing. Try it? Yeah. Another okay. thing here is this is a one pot meal because you mm -hmm. have your veg. You have mm -hmm. your pasta, your eggs, your bacon, and your veg. Okay. Do you want a little what extra cheese? What hour do you eat this? Again, I'm so. What, what's <laughs> the perfect hour? hour? Of the day. 7 a.m. Right now, you know what? 10 30. This okay. is the perfect hour of the day. 7 30 oh in gosh. LA. What do you think? Do you love it? Mm. See? That is so good. Bobby, you could make this mm. at home, right? You good. saw how easy that was. That's what I'm going to say. Sometimes. 
For example, like a frosty and a fry in the south. We do that. It shouldn't <laughs> yeah. go together, but it does. Right. This is that. Oh, a so, frosty well, and a fry. Oh, yeah, that's it. a real. <laughs> it shouldn't go together, but it does. Yeah, awesome. but this does. Yeah. All right, to make this at home, pasta. head to today.com slash food for more of Alyssa's recipes. Check out her new book. You can get it at today.com slash shop dinner in one. I got a swallow here. Okay. It's our very first episode of The Boost here on Today All Day. So here's our goal, to bring you a little bit of good news and positivity. So today, we are highlighting an organization making dreams come true for students with Down syndrome. And of course, we're going to share a favorite feel-good video. But first, today is National Compliment Day. And a new app called Gas is picking up speed with high schoolers trying to pay it forward. Savannah Sellers has that story. Someone said that I would be the I would finish the test after three minutes, which I really appreciate. Best laugh comes to mind. It says has has a 10 pack. Compliments of Gas, the wildly popular new social media app that has millions of teenagers complimenting each other or gassing each other up. Finn, Nikki, William and Brandon go to New York City's Stuyvesant High School, where nearly 900 students are on the app. When you open up your phone, how does it make you feel? Great, because I think people are noticing little details about me that I thought they didn't know about. You know like when a random person compliments you on your street and it's like really nice? Yeah, <laughs> so yes, it's really feeling. Like that. I got one that stated that Taylor Swift would write a love song about me and <laughs> I just had a smile on my face. <laughs> like this person gets me. <laughs> the four sophomores showed me how it works. First, users anonymously answer a series of polls about their friends. Cutest little sneeze. <laughs> the polls range from thoughtful superlatives has the kindest heart. Oh. Two flirty <laughs> confessions. You would ask them out if they were taken. When a student is picked, they get a notification or a flame, but no name of the person who voted. It's anonymous. <laughs> so I try to, you know, do a little background digging. A little digging? A little digging? Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> a like, little. Part of the reason gas is resonating, it's authentic okay, to this generation. Uh, it speaks their language. Always spit back. No. Translation, you speak the truth. Drip on that. Translation, you have good style. It's like a whole meal. Translation, extremely attractive. Gas is the brainchild of former Facebook manager Nikita Beer. He says he made the app to spread positivity and improve self-esteem of teens. There's a lot of toxic things about today's social networks, and we just wanted a place where you could just open your phone and see something that makes you feel better about yourself. Launched in three states in August, it took just one month for Gas to shoot to the top of the U.S. App Store. It's now nationwide, and Beer says their feedback shows it's making a difference. We get messages every day from teens, hundreds of them, uh, about the impact it's had. It's helped with their depression, their anxiety. Even some have told us that they've reconsidered self-harm. Wow. Can you expand on that a little bit? When you're uh, in your formative years as a teen, you're trying to understand uh, how you're being perceived. What GAS has done is it provides a venue for you to open up to your friends and say what you love about each other. And that has enabled people to feel they fit in, that, they, that they're liked by their peers. How nice is that, to I, have an app and a space that just feels fun? Uh, it's absolutely amazing. I check it when I wake up. So when I wake up, like, there's like 10 people that said, I love your hair. Nice and best smile. I walk down the halls and I feel a little bit better about myself. In just five months, more than one and a half billion compliments have been delivered through gas. Just since we've been talking, tell me about the notifications you got. Would make an ugly face and still look pretty. Oh. Would ditch studying for final story concert, which <laughs> you if would it was a Taylor Swift have. concert. Taylor yeah, you would. Baby, you're my firework. Oh. oh. I want to know who sent that might be the sole reason for global warming. I don't know who this is. Oh, it's supposed to mean like you're hot. Yeah. Not oh, like wait, you actually. No. Oh, that's what it, what so many compliments. I like the glasses. Thanks. <laughs> Gen Zers kindling kindness and sparking positivity. One flame at a time. A compliment to a stranger. 
buying a co-worker coffee, shoveling a neighbor's snowy driveway. We all know an act of kindness when we see one, but what you may not know? New research published in the Journal of Positive Psychology suggests doing kind things for others may help you feel better too. I kept coming across social connection seems to be one of the most powerful ingredients for flourishing in life. That idea inspired a new project out of Ohio State University. Dr. David Craig and Dr. Jennifer Chevins lead a team of researchers on kindness. They asked people who reported feeling anxious and depressed to perform three small acts of kindness two days a week, every week for the five-week study. Participants did things like bake cookies for friends, smile at strangers, and volunteer. The results were dramatic. Folks who participated in the Acts of Kindness group reported that they felt less depressed, less anxious. Study participants also reported feeling more connected to others and more satisfied with their lives. Participants felt such benefit that 75% of them continued doing Acts of Kindness even after the study ended. There just seems to be something about having social connection that brings meaning and purpose into our lives. Without it, um, everything else just kind of feels empty. Ohio State senior Abby Arntz discovered healing through helping too. How is the CA going? She wasn't part of the kindness study, but she took a class with Dr. Chevins last year. One of her assignments was to do kind things for others. So Abby started going out of her way to hold the door. Go ahead. Yeah, have a great day. Giving out compliments to strangers. Hey, I just want to say your shoes are really cool and writing positive affirmations on sticky notes around campus. As someone who is fairly anxious myself, I was a little hesitant, but as soon as I actually started giving the compliments and holding doors, I felt this reassurance. I have this power to brighten people's days and um, make a positive impact on others. Something Abby learned, as did so many others. Kindness can be a prescription for anyone and everyone. Have a great day. And it doesn't cost you a thing. Wow, so many great takeaways from that study. And here to help us break it all down is Dr. Kojo Sarfo. He's a psychotherapist. He shares his wisdom with his three million followers on social media. He's also the author of a book. It's called Feeling Good, a mental health workbook. Dr. Sarfo, we knew that doing kind things kind of makes you feel good in a moment, but right. I, I just didn't know it had such long-term effects on you. Yeah, it's uh, one of the most powerful things that you can do, and it's so practical. And for those who are struggling with depression and or anxiety who may feel hopeless and helpless just having that connection with people it goes a long way it's a connection but it's also a sense of purpose right. and yeah. meaning which exactly. so often when you're depressed or anxious you you don't feel that mm -hmm. yeah exactly and when you talk about you know um, having a sense of purpose it's so powerful to do something for somebody else because when you do that you realize that oh people do appreciate me people enjoy having me here on the planet and when you're depressed and you're hopeless uh -huh. you sometimes forget that well it's all about connection I feel like even if you make a connection with a stranger Right. or something. I remember this one stranger one time gifted me a, um, a cupcake and I remember it, it was 10 yeah. years ago and I remember it to this day because she left it behind after I admired them once and it, it stays it stays with you. Exactly and sometimes we forget the impact that we have on people and when you go out and you compliment somebody about their shoes or you say I like your cupcakes or I like your dress, yeah. it's going to improve your confidence and the likelihood that they're going to give you a negative reaction is very low and you may have made a new friend. It's interesting because a lot of times especially if you've got a friend or family member and they're struggling with depression or anxiety, the last thing you want to do is burden them. Yes, exactly. That's what but you, you like. might actually be helping them if you said, hey, could you watch my kids for an hour? Right. Or do you mind, you know, doing the pickup today or something? Yeah. It, it actually might be something that's helpful to them. Mm -hmm. no, I think it's very helpful because it shows them that they're needed and that their help goes a long way. And you can start off with small practical things. Even if you're somebody who you're depressed and you're not able to get out of bed, mm -hmm. you can call somebody, you can send them a message, you know, leave them a nice uh, voice recording just to make their spirits feel a little bit better. I think we both try to teach our kids this because right. being kind to someone is great. Mm -hmm. You obviously were raised by, by someone who is kind. What are the best ways, I know it's probably show your kids and right. don't tell them, but what are the best ways to kind of help our kids uh, follow this? I think it's important to teach your kids the importance of, you know, just being kind to people, whether it's holding a door open for somebody. I would do that when I was a kid. My mom acted like, you know, I wanted to Super Bowl. Yeah. She, she made it go, such go. A, a, a big deal. Um, and I remember that. And, you know, I try and, you know, if I'm leaving the gym, I'll hold the door for somebody and people may have things in their hands and that could make their day, you know. So it doesn't have to be the biggest thing, but just having
having kids who are kind to other people is going to you know, bring the kindness back to you. You know, it's funny because you could read this and say, okay, if I decide to do something kind because I'm trying to get something or mm -hmm. get some feeling exactly. for myself, you know, that might not sit right with everybody. Yeah. But as I was thinking about it, I was thinking, well, just do it anyway yeah, because right. it's still yeah. a kindness that you're putting yeah. into the world. Exactly. Whatever your motive may mm -hmm. be. Right. And it comes back to you and it gives you a sense of confidence, you yeah. know, and in this world, you know, we just came out the pandemic and we're trying to connect with people. You get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> it's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. How many of you were up there? At least, like, 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens wherever you are nbc news streaming free now you get one beautiful life to live jenna doesn't stop till it's sold we have this circle of women that love each other this is a moment we're in right now this is really electric love you <laughs> for dateline premium subscribe now on apple podcasts Welcome back to The Boost. Not too far from where we are over in Brooklyn, there's a small cinema that's creating movie magic and in the process, building a special place to celebrate artists. Take a look. It was the idea that you could tell a story and really impact someone's life. Emily Stewart has always understood the power of filmmaking. What do you remember about the first time when you went to the movies? Wow, it was Godzilla that we saw, and my parents didn't speak English. And I remember just being fascinated by just the visuals. Growing up in a Dominican family in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, she pursued a traditional career path, but never lost her love for the movies. I was doing real estate, and one of the investors said, my nephew wants to make a movie. Why don't you take a look? With no filmmaking experience, Emmeline relied on her business skills to produce her first short film in 2009. And then I thought, wait a minute. So I could do this for a lot of people if I could figure out how to make money. Mm. So she dedicated herself to lifting up underrepresented voices in media, producing 19 indie projects to date. What is it about these films that you wanted to invest? You're not really investing in the film, you're really investing in the filmmaker. And so I really wanted to give an opportunity to people to tell their stories. And I think a lot of people, they see the movie on the big screen and they just think, okay, somebody made it, boom, now it's up on the big screen. Thousands and thousands of films are never seen, especially with minority produced films. So was it a no for you that led to this theater right now? Absolutely. So I did a faith-based film and I just couldn't get distribution for it. Mm. And I thought, so that's it. Like one person somewhere gets to decide and all of this work is for nothing. So you walked away from that no and did what? Somebody said, well, then you got to build your own theater. Emmeline did just that, opening Stewart Cinema and Cafe in September of 2018, becoming the first black Latina to own a movie theater in New York City. So how do these independent filmmakers do it? What do you do? We rent out the theater. It's one price. And then you charge whatever you want. And you show the movie for as long as you think it could be sustained. And this is why we also have the studio movies, right? because that adds pedigree to mm -hmm. the theater. So you get the full range. Now your film that no one's ever heard of is playing at the same theater that Black Panther is playing. As for those classic snacks, her cafe goes beyond popcorn and candy. 
I saw empanadas out there. You had like a, a movie with Coquito. Yes. <laughs> so my mom makes the empanadas and a lot of our cakes and stuff are local vendors. Freezing. And she's just getting started. Emelyn is building a new multiplex and is headed back to her neighborhood roots. I am building the theater in Sunset Park because that neighborhood hasn't had a theater in over 30 years. And as a kid, I remember having to get on the bus to go to another neighborhood, a white neighborhood, to watch movies. While Emmeline spends her days showcasing new artists, the impact she's made on her community is her biggest hit yet. Do you think back to when you got that no? Yeah. It's almost a, it was a blessing in disguise that that it person sure told was. you no. I'm so grateful for that guy <laughs> who said no. <laughs> who said no. <laughs> because otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Keep your ears open for the next call. It has the stress and energy of many restaurant kitchens. One hour before for everything to be outside, one hour. Yet this one is a classroom. Oxtail will go right here. These young aspiring chefs are high school sophomores and juniors at Food and Finance High School in Manhattan. I need someone to do a chiffonade on the basil. Perfecting the art of setting tables. You need to know as a server, oh, my table's about to get up and go to the buffet. I gotta make sure that their situation is, is reset. And preparing all the dishes for their monthly luncheon, a showcase for these teenagers pursuing their dreams. Beautiful. It's about being able to be yourself and put your own twist and spins on certain dishes and also being able to create what you think people will love. Food is somewhere that I can get away from everything. I'm working with people with all different types of experience levels and it's fun. You get different perspectives and stuff like that. So it's, it's more fun than anything else. <laughs> A big help in making those dreams a reality is the Food Education Fund, a New York City nonprofit that works with three partner public schools like this one on funding, training, and placement in area restaurants. Sean Feeney is the fund's co-chair. Today is their first shot. The lights go on, and this is they get that taste of taking care of others, feeding others, making people feel great after they leave us even better. So it's an exciting program for us, and hopefully they love it so much that they do become interns, they become team members of restaurants, and it's something they do for the rest of their life. It starts today. The Food Education Fund currently reaches about 860 public high school students, 97% of whom are minorities. And in the last five years, every single graduate of their training program has been hired in an area restaurant. 20-year-old Romeo Malpica is one of those graduating chefs. He interned during his senior year and is now a line cook at Lilia in Brooklyn, focusing on pasta dishes and the grill. It's just that confidence of being able to do something by my axe too. It's like, okay, and now I'm building towards something, you know, building towards myself, bettering myself. Yeah, I think, I think it's great, especially coming out of the pandemic to get these young kids in early and again to show them how to be successful in this industry and show them that it can be a viable career path and that they can get a lot out of it. It's the first step for the next generation of chefs, continuing the love of food they learned from their parents and grandparents. That's how I knew I wanted to make people feel like this because she made me feel like this. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. Film. The bigger piece of the puzzle. We begin puzzle. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? How you doing, Lester? NBC News, streaming free now. You get one beautiful life to live. 
Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. <laughs> it's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to The Boost, our brand new show here on Today All Day, Al. He's got a beautiful story to share with us on a woman making dreams come true for students with Down syndrome. And she was inspired by her own daughter. This is Ruby's Rainbows. Introducing Ruby Plakta. 11 year old Ruby Plakta loves an introduction. Oh, you're so amazing. <laughs> her mom, Liz Plakta, is her biggest cheerleader. The minute I held Ruby, I knew that I, I needed the world to see what I saw in her. Ruby was diagnosed with Down syndrome the day she was born. I always say to joke that she came early, tiny, and rocking an extra chromosome. As a new mom on this unexpected journey, Liz was determined to understand everything she could about her daughter. Quickly, I just, like, shut all the books. You went on, and on being mom. I did, and I let, I let her, you know, be my guide. She's been the coolest freaking thing ever. I wouldn't change a single hair on your head. I love that. Uh, mom. <laughs> With this newfound perspective, Liz started planning ahead to help Ruby thrive. I was so interested in like her future. About six months old, I looked at my husband and I was like, I, I think I want to help somebody with Down syndrome go to college. I'm going to help them, you know, go for their dreams. In 2011, Liz and her husband, Tim, created Ruby's Rainbow, a nonprofit that gives partial scholarships to adults with Down syndrome wanting to pursue higher education. 11 years later, Liz has created a community of believers raising hundreds of thousands of dollars every year for Ruby's Rainbow. We gave out 119 scholarships this year, which was a record for us. We gave out, it's crazy, isn't it? We gave out $483,000 in scholarships, which wow. I want to cry just thinking about it. I got it! I got it! from Ruby's Rainbow. Aww. Congratulations! <laughs> well, we've given out 599 scholarships. That's over $2 million in scholarships in the past 11 years since this little lady's been born. Recipients go on to complete college programs, a few even getting their associates and bachelor's degrees and one is going for her master's. The confidence and the life skills that they're gaining just by being allowed to go out into the world and make mistakes mm -hmm. and learn from them. Like Don't everybody. Me, it, like everybody. Today, Ruby is in her first year of middle school and flourishing. <laughs> Ruby, what are your favorite things? I like to be in band. What's your instrument? I play a trombone. Ah, I like that. <laughs> ah. But she's already looking to the future. Ruby, do you want to go to college? I do. What do you want to study, Ruby? I want to be a doctor. She loves getting her blood drawn, so. <laughs> oh, wow, Ruby, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't either. I do. <laughs> Above all, Liz understands how believing in someone like her daughter can change a life. It's an honor for me to help other people with Down syndrome be the wow. best of me. Ruby is the gift that keeps giving. You are the gift that keeps on giving, Ruby. Okay. <laughs> I love you. It really has like restored my faith in humanity. I'm amazed at the nice people that I meet. My life kind of completely got turned upside down. 
For Katie Scar, life started to roll in a different direction, all because of sandwiches. Hi, would you eat a sandwich with a stranger in New York City? AKA me, I am the stranger. That video spread through TikTok, gaining almost 400,000 views. So I decided to go on a sandwich date. Why did you decide to start doing this? I love meeting people, but I'm very, very shy and awkward around a lot of people. Honestly, during the pandemic, I got a little lonely and I felt the need to like push myself to get out and be doing more things. So I just was like, I'm gonna force myself to like go meet new people and randomly decided to put it on TikTok. I had never posted a TikTok before. I had no idea how it even worked. I had no idea what would happen happened, which is that I got like 500 emails in a week. So you get 500 emails. How do you decide which one you were going to answer and, and then go meet that person? Because that's it's not true. something I would tell my kid to do. Yeah, no, that's true. Every single person that emailed me almost, except for maybe like five out of the 500, were genuinely nice people. People would often include their social media information so that I could look them up and see that they were real people. And honestly, I have kind of been following my gut and, and making sure that I'm safe. Since January of this year, Katie's been going on a weekly sandwich date with all sorts of people. My great date, Jabari, is a lawyer. This week we are joined by Jane, meet Vanessa. Jonathan is a great dad. He takes his sons on all kinds of adventures. <laughs> Breaking the ice and bread at a variety of New York City eateries. Who doesn't like a sandwich? Yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, sandwich is a casual. Hey, let's meet up. Let's have a sandwich. I have a sandwich. That's true. There's such a variety of sandwiches. Mm -hmm. They're casual, fairly inexpensive. Mm -hmm. It's like such a low pressure way to meet somebody. Have you kept up with people that you've had sandwich dates? Yes, I have. I've, I've kept up with all of them to some degree, some more than others. There's a woman that I met that I had no idea when I reached out to her that we work in the exact same office building. So we've we've hung out. I met someone that I'm actually oh, like no. kind of dating in real life. Kind of, kind of dating. Oh, hold on, <laughs> Ricky, come on over here. How did your sandwich date with uh, with Katie go? <laughs> that was pretty, thing, thing it went pretty well. Uh, obviously. So you got a sandwich and you made a love connection. And I made a love connection. So thank you, honey. It's, it's like, can I have a, an extra side of love? Okay, question section. In her TikTok videos, Katie includes a quick interview section with her dates. What is your proudest accomplishment in life? What is your favorite memory from your life? What is currently bringing you the most joy in life? Trying new things. Planning a trip to Ireland. Connecting with people. So I, of course, got grilled as well. What is your proudest accomplishment in life? I would say uh, my kids. They bring me joy. They also suck the life out of me every day, but nothing makes me happier. While connecting with others, Katie has also reflected a lot about herself. I get nervous every single time. I'm convinced that the person is gonna not like me or be like, oh, she was not interesting. But I just, my feet walk there, I show up, and, and then everything goes so much better than I thought it would. <laughs> it almost sounds like you're saying, and the sandwich helps, to just show up. <laughs> yeah, just show up in life for anything, like just, just, get your feet on the ground and show up. <laughs> This is what it looks and feels the latest like. Film. The bigger piece to the puzzle. We begin comes. tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. NBC News, streaming free now. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. 
For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. I had a chance to share a video capturing the Internet's attention. Watch for a smile and a boost of joy that carries you throughout the day. So a toddler was really, really missing his mom. She'd been in the hospital for a couple of days with kidney stones. So watch what happened when he found her picture ID card in her purse. Who's that? Kissing your mama. <laughs> oh, that's the sweetest. You know that is mom's face anywhere. Uh, just imagine when he finally got to lay eyes yeah. on her for real. How, oh, how sweet is this to, to me? Yeah, I had to. So sweet. Why, hello there. Welcome to Start Today. I try to make exercising part of my life. It's a habit I've been encouraging today viewers to embrace throughout my years on the show. Well, guess what? Over 150,000 of you have joined us in our Start Today community, sharing progress and motivating each other. Well, we got to keep that momentum going. We have another empowering episode lined up from inspiring conversations to workouts that we can all do at home. Plus, we've got today fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour and I answering your questions. February is American Heart Month, and that's what we're focusing on in Start Today. Today, fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour and I kicked off this month's challenge. Check it out. Now, for February, we want to focus on heart health, and we encourage you to scan that QR code so you could join our Start Today walking club. Let's kick things off this month with an inspiring journey. Of course, Steph Mansour here helping us out. Well, we want to talk about Kathy Augustine from Merritt Island, Florida. Here's her story in her own words. <laughs> I was 27 years old and teaching kindergarten when I got sick with what I thought was a bad cold. It went on for weeks and I continued to get weaker. My mother insisted I get a chest x-ray. That's when the doctors discovered I had cardiomyopathy, a disease that changes the way the heart functions. I was rushed to the hospital for emergency open heart surgery five years ago. And then my heart stopped. After being revived, I lived with a heart pumping device called an LVAD for six months. Then I received a life-saving heart transplant. I had to learn how to walk again and use walking as a means to recover. My favorite place to walk is at Universal Studios. I joined the Start Today Walking Challenge last June because of its inspiring community. We're here at Universal Orlando. Our and in November of last year, I was able to be one of the walkers. Here we go! Alongside Al Roker and Stephanie Mansour at Universal. Since my surgery, I've lost 120 pounds and walked to 5K for Donate Life. I continue to walk to keep my heart strong. Now, let's let's meet her. Kathy Augustine, come on out. Good to see you. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic, Kathy. Nice to see you. And, of course, look at that. That Woo! is crazy. What a, what a transformation. Well, we've got Stephanie Monsor, our Today Fitness contributor here. Kath, come on over. Uh, good morning to both of you. It is so good to see you. So first of all, how are you feeling? How are you doing with your new heart? I feel great. Every yeah. day's a new day. And, yeah. and now, there was a point, I understand, you had to relearn how to walk. How, how difficult was that? I literally could not. Like, I was in the hospital for two months, and mm -hmm. I couldn't um, stand. I couldn't walk. I had to go to rehab and physically learn how to get up and walk, move my feet, and I just had to do that after my LVAD surgery. How, how important was that for, for your heart health, your, it was, your recovery? It was crucial because of, I needed to get walking and get active, and my heart needed to get healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned our, our Start Today Walking Club became a part of your life. Yes. I joined in June of 2022, and um, I've just been a member, and I've seen all the motivational stories and everything. Um, Stephanie's been motivational. You've been motivational on your videos um, everything is just great because of every day there's new posts about how much people have walked or how much uh -huh. things people have been motivated so 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 Steph you know we, we think about you know it's Valentine's Day in, in yes. February heart and emotion but uh, it's also about health that's right you know a lot of people think about cardio exercise when it comes to their heart health and that is extremely important we've got our walking challenge uh -huh. you know but in addition for this month for heart healthy month we are focusing on strength training and that's because research actually shows when you combine cardio with strength training, uh -huh. you get more benefits for your heart than if you were just to do cardio 
exercise. And that's because we know building lean muscle mass helps us to speed up the metabolism, right. burn more calories, and therefore help us maintain a healthy weight. All right, so you talk about upper bar body exercise. Yes, so we're going to start off with some upper body exercises. Okay. So we're going to grab these dumbbells. I recommend right. starting kind of light, mm -hmm. three pounds, um, and then go up from there. Okay. So what we're going to do first is the W exercise. Okay. So I really want you to connect emotion this month, ah. our heart healthy month. Feel like a winner as Ooh. you go up into that W and then bring it back down. We're opening wide on this diagonal and then coming down to the shoulders. Abs pull in. Mm -hmm. Feel that, Kathy? Yep. Yeah, working the upper body and the shoulders. And then the next upper body exercise is a V for victory. Okay. So I want you to feel victorious as you do your workout. If you're sitting at home wondering, oh gosh, I don't know if I can do these with the mm -hmm. weights, that's okay. Put the weights down and just right. do this for some shoulder mobility. And, and how many uh, reps do you do? 10 repetitions okay. and then we move on to the next exercise. Okay. Next exercise? Yep. Now I'm going to show us goddess pose. So oh. we're all going to unleash that inner goddess here. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> even you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> so opening wide into a wide leg open toe squat. We're going to lower down, abs in tight, knees out to the sides, and then stand up, squeeze the glutes at the top. Good. So we lower down. That inner goddess is unleashing here. Stand up uh -huh. and working the quads, this the hip flexors, okay. <laughs> and even the hamstrings. Now the next exercise is a warrior two. So mm -hmm. Kathy, obviously you are such a warrior. Al, okay. you've been through so much. You're a warrior as well. What I want you to do is open the legs here into a warrior two position. Good. Knee over the ankle. Good. Turn. Yes, exactly. Al, perfect. Abs in. We bend the knee over the ankle and then we press to stand up. So this is a dynamic yoga pose actually uh -huh. that we turn into a strength training exercise. So if you're at home wondering, okay, how can I unleash my inner warrior? Maybe right. you've been through some health issues. Maybe you're just having a hard time getting started this year. Scan that QR code on your screen. Join our Start Today community. People like Kathy, myself, yep. you, Al, we're motivating you every step of the way. Kathy, Steph, thank you so much. Don't forget, we do want you to join our Start Today walking challenge. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, yeah, scan, nice job, Al. Scan that QR code <laughs> or just head to today.com slash start today. Oh, that was awesome. Well, coming up, we've got an inspirational conversation with one of our Start Today community members. We'll be right back. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Just ahead in this half hour, we're going to introduce you to... Because every day, we start our morning so you can take on yours. How many of you were up there? At least, like, 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, on Lester. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Welcome back to Start Today. Yeah, health journeys are never a straight line. There are ups and downs, there are little detours, but hearing inspiring stories, always a great motivator. Today, fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour recently chatted with Pam Dorsey, one of our Start Today community members on Facebook Live, where she opened up about her own health journey. So Pam, can you tell us how you found Start Today and, and where you were at health-wise? Oh, sure. I was watching the Today Show um, and Al Roker uh, was talking about the 30 day challenge for June. Um, and during that time, I, I already had in my mind, OK, Pam, you got to do something different, right? I you got to get active. You got to get moving. So when I heard Al talk about the 30 day challenge, I jumped on it and we've been wide open since then. Yes. OK, and where were you at? health-wise, Pam? Like, were you moving? Were you eating healthy? Like, where were you at? I 
who had started walking here and there, um, but I definitely was not on plan. As far as eating healthy, living healthy, not so much. I know non-scale victories have been big for you too. And also scale, you know, inches and everything. Can you tell us um, where you were at then and now where you're at now? So I was over 200 pounds when I started. Not good at all, right? So I was the highest weight I had been in my whole life. Mm -hmm. When my mom passed in 2020, that's when I really put on the pounds, right? Because I have learned, even during my journey with the Start Today family, that I'm an emotional eater. Mm -hmm. So after losing my mom, um, it was horrible. So the couch and food was my comfort zone, right? The scale sometimes is not our friend, right? Because you can look at the number and it can discourage you. And that and that happened with me um, because I have been walking, I know at least a 30 days consecutive, probably more than that. And I got on the scale and it hadn't budged. And I was like, what in the world? You know, so it can be a big discourager. Yes. But when I had my first NSV, Stephanie, oh my gosh, I did a video, I posted it in the group, I did all that because I fit into a pair of my jeans. I got into my jeans! <laughs> Look, y'all. I couldn't button these jeans. I could not button them. And now I'm in them. Can you give us like your top maybe three non-scale victories aside from the jeans, like energy, sleep, mood, like stuff like that? <laughs> Yes, it is definitely an energy pick-me-upper, for sure. I have two very busy boys. I have a 15-year-old son, and I have a just-turned 8-year-old son. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm able to chase my 8-year-old more without nearly passing out. <laughs> I can, I have more energy. Walking definitely is an energy booster, no doubt. I feel like a star. Have you made any changes to your food? <sighs> when I first started in June, I, t I promised myself that I would not put myself on a diet per se. Because to me, I just minimize. I definitely drink more water now. I have never been a fan of water. I'm like, oh, just let me have uh, some Sprite. Sprite is clear like water. <laughs> close. <laughs> it's close, right? <laughs> so I definitely increased my water intake, but I could tell a difference by drinking more water. Yeah. You think it's not that big of a deal, but in actuality yeah. it is. It makes a very big difference. Very yeah. big difference. Is there anything that you started saying to yourself every morning to get you to walk that you hadn't been saying in the past? I had to tell myself that this is for my best interest. This is going to make me better. Even if I don't see immediate results over the long haul, maybe it's adding a few years onto my lifespan, right? I have to encourage myself that way and say, this is in your best interest. This is something that you have to do. What a terrific conversation. Well, coming up, Steph's gonna be back sharing a workout that should keep our hearts healthy. Don't go away. How many of you were up there? At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? Thank you, Mr. This is what it looks and feels the latest like. The bigger piece to the puzzle. We begin tonight with breaking news. How much water ultimately will be forced inland? Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. I love you too. <laughs> NBC News, streaming free now. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. For breaking news in our changing world, 
Download the NBC News app. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop baby. Oh, I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. And welcome back to Start Today. So let's face it, dead of winter, it can be hard to, to really feel motivated to get outside to work, uh, work out. Well, lucky for us, we've got today fitness contributor Stephanie Monsoor, who's got a heart-focused workout that we can all do in the comfort of our homes. Let's take a look. Today, I'm going to guide you through an upper body workout that'll open up the chest and also work the back, the arms, and the shoulders. These simple movements will inspire all of us to use our strength training for a heart healthy fitness routine. So first, we're gonna pick up our dumbbells. I'm using three pound weight, which is what I recommend if you're just starting off, or you can go up to five or seven pounds, wherever you feel comfortable. The first exercise, actually we only need one of these, so I'm gonna set that down because we're starting with a one arm overhead press. So bring the weight out from the ear, arm is at a 90 degree angle, we're gonna press up overhead, and then come to center. Now, as you're doing this, I want you to look forward, but also look up with your eyes and make sure that you can see this weight in your peripheral vision. You do not want to lift the weight over your head like that. You wanna keep your abs in tight as you press the weight up to center and bring it to the starting position. Great job. Two more, here we go. Exhale, press up, inhale, and exhale, inhale, rest. We're gonna go to the other side. So here we go, goal post arm, 90 degree angle, Exhale, press, inhale, center. Now you may notice that one arm doesn't feel as strong as the other. Maybe it feels harder on this side than it did on the first side. That's okay. We're not totally equal when it comes to our strength. Many of us are more dominant on one side than the other. So just work with your body, listen to yourself, and if you need to lower the weights, that's okay. Last one and rest, good. So now we're gonna use both weights for a hammer curl. Now this is like a bicep curl, except we're gonna rotate the arms as we curl up. So arms and palms face our body as we go down, and then we turn them to face up as we come up. Great. Now for all these exercises, I want you to have your knees bent slightly and pull your abs in so that you feel comfortable. And in fact, you could actually do these seated if you really wanted to. Now the next exercise is hug a tree. So we're gonna really feel that love. We're gonna open the arms out to the sides. We're gonna bring the weights to center and open out to the sides. Good. Bring the weights to center and open. Make sure that you're not engaging the traps or the neck here. We're just working the shoulders, the tops of the arms, good, and a little bit of the chest. Awesome. So when you come together, you feel that working, and when you open, you feel the chest a little bit, but you still feel the shoulders working here, even during that little chest stretch. Good, two more, two, nice, and one, rest. Good. Now we're going to move into the W. Now this is W because you're a winner. Here we go. We're going to bring the weights up, abs in. We're going to press the weights up on that diagonal. Bring them back towards your ears. Press them up and out and in. Good. So again, we're not lifting here. We're not crunching the shoulders up. We're relaxing the shoulders down, relaxing the muscles along the sides of the neck and we're really just working the arms. Good, W for winner here. Nice job, three more. Good, last two. Awesome, and one, rest. Our fifth and final move for this upper body workout is a V, and this is a V for victory. So arms down straight from the um, hip bones here. We're gonna bring them up into a V and lower down. Good, up into a V and lower. So really sync your breath with your movement here. So I exhale as I come up because that's where I'm doing the work and then I inhale to lower. So it's like this, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, good. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Last one, 
exhale, inhale, and rest. Great job. That was your upper body workout routine. Just as important as what you put out is what you put in. We need to fuel our bodies the right way. We've got registered dietitian Vanessa Rossetto recently sharing the nutrients we need to know to take charge of our health. We are going to help take help you take charge of your health by talking food, breaking down the nutrients that you need right now and in the right amounts also. So joining us this morning is Vanessa Rosetto, registered dietitian and CEO of Coolina Health. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. It's so nice to have you Thanks here. Thanks for having me. And I think it's so important, um, you know, when we talk about all this stuff, it's like you think, oh, this is good for you, but how much are you supposed to be taking in and is it different for men and women? So we're going to start today with fiber. Yeah, so this is one that is actually, there are differences for men and women. So men should have about 35 grams and women okay. about 28 grams. But when I say, hey, get 28 grams of fiber, you're like, cool, where? What does that even How? mean? How, exactly. Yes. And you know, fiber is good for gut health, it's good for weight management. And so easy ways for me, I always think like more bang for my buck. Okay. So two grams of, uh, two tablespoons of chia are 11 grams of fiber. Oh, so you add you that, add that to your oats, which are mm -hmm. four grams, right? And so now we're at 15. Then we're gonna have- and this stuff all has fiber too? All has fiber. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate and... blows everyone's mind, 85% or over yeah. has about three or four grams of fiber. Take a little piece of that. Right? Yeah. yeah. And also, you know. Wow, that is the hardest dark chocolate <laughs> I've ever had. Also, okay. one cup of raspberries mm -hmm. is eight grams of fiber. Okay. So, you know, if you want to just like add something extra to your oats, just toss it in. It's the easiest exactly. way to do it. Exactly. Pistachios, edamame, all exactly. examples. Okay. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, fiber. let's talk about vegetables. Can't talk, it, we can't do this segment without vegetables. You need vegetables. Right? Everyone needs While them. I chump on my dark yes. chocolate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> How much? So I like to say one cup of vegetables at lunch and dinner. Doesn't have to be roasted broccoli mm -hmm. or you know roasted edamame. One, right. We can just cut up carrots, right. cut up celery, cut up red bell peppers. Is raw best? Depends on yeah. what's good, what your stomach can take. Yeah. So yeah, if you can tolerate raw vegetables, that's awesome. If you want to cook them down because that's a little bit easier for mm -hmm. you, that's okay too. Right. But it doesn't have to be you know shaved parmesan and olive oil and roasted for 30 minutes. It's just cut them up, put them on the side, keep it going. You could even munch in those in the, during the day, that's right? That's right, that's yeah. right. Yep. For those people who do that whole all day exactly. eating thing. Exactly, and you can add some cheese with it <laughs> yeah. to help you, okay. make, help you get full, so all it's right. really great. So here's the next thing, right? I see so many people in this building who walk around yes. with these things of water yes. this big. and good that, for them. Right. <laughs> If they, if, they, if they don't get to the bottom, they feel like it's they're a failure. Yeah. <laughs> How much water? 90 ounces? <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking for 90 ounces a day, which could be a little bit difficult, but many of us are working at home, so we have easy access to a restroom if you need. Good point. <laughs> Sometimes that bothers people. But actually, some quick ways for you to get hydration in, you can just add a pinch of Himalayan sea salt. That helps with electrolytes and helps to keep you feeling really? more hydrated. Yep. Himalayan sea salt? Himalayan sea salt, okay. yeah, so you don't have to worry too too much right. about you know the 90 ounces if it's a little bit taxing. Well, that's kind of the good salt. Let's talk about the not so good salt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's funny because the thing is, it's not just table salt. There's sodium in so many of our products. Sodium is everywhere. Yeah. Um, and if you have some issues with blood pressure or things like that, you want to pay attention. So the American Heart Association recommends one teaspoon, about 2,300 milligrams. Mm -hmm. Salt is hidden everywhere. So a day? A day. A teaspoon a day? And so here's the thing. Most people eat fresh food, right? Yeah. And so if you are eating canned soups, you want to look for for things that are low sodium. You yeah. can also get low sodium cold cuts. Yeah. It's just being mindful of those words so that you don't overdo it. All right, since we're talking about goals in 2023, healthy eating, all of this, this is where I mess up, snacks. My snacks aren't right. I already know. Well, <laughs> you got to get your snacks I, yeah, my lined snacks up right. Just, <laughs> I got to get it in order. Well, what happens is people are looking for snacks that are already processed and yummy packaged, and yummy no, yes i'm always kidding. looking for things if it's not delicious we're not eating it right, right and so sometimes you'll get a bar and the bar will be 300 calories and maybe that might be a little bit over mm -hmm. so you could do the dark chocolate with 15 almonds so okay. there's fiber and there's protein and there's fat That's not bad it's going to hold you over so i'm always looking for more than 150 calories but no more than 200. so between 150 and 200. yeah is this where i'm supposed to live this or is, this is where you can is live this home yeah this is home so, okay and so here's a fun way because eggs maybe by themselves are a little bit boring just a little so we can add a little hot sauce. We can add everything but the bagel seasoning. Okay. It's very delicious. But also, we can always go back to the dark chocolate okay. and the almonds for something fun. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Welcome See? to my home, Harry. That's right. That's right. <laughs> How's that not Doritos. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. Eggs. And eggs. Mm, Vanessa, yum. That was great. Thank, Thank you, you, Vanessa. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. <laughs> Vanessa, we appreciate those helpful tips. Well, coming up, Steph and I will be answering your health and fitness questions. How many of you were up there?
at least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. At least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. Alrighty, welcome back. So a new month brings new challenges to accomplish and new questions along the way. Well, we've got the best question answerer, answerer here, Steph Mansour, to answer these questions. And, and I guess I've got a couple too as well. Uh, so, oh, so Steph, first up, you ready? Yep. Okay, uh, Jean Marie sent in a question for you. Should I weight train more than stretch or stretch every day? I love this question, it's a common one, and my answer is split the difference, Al. So I would love for you to strength train three times a week, and on the off days, three or four times a week, I'd love for you to stretch. Why? Because strength training is essential to helping us with our muscle health, and the muscles hug closer to the bones, which help to improve our posture and functionality and balance in the body. But stretching helps to loosen up those muscles. So whether you are exercising a lot or you're sedentary, muscles get tight and they contract, and that can cause pain and other health issues. So I'd love for you to stretch half of the days of the week and then strength train the other half. I guess Michelle has a question for me. My name's Michelle. I'm from Caldwell, Idaho. My question for you is what is your go-to protein, especially when you're running around for work? My go-to protein, well, uh, I, I usually keep in my fridge a couple of like uh, sticks of string cheese. Uh -huh. uh, I get it from one, one store that's got some prosciutto wrapped around Ooh, it. Yum. I've got a jar of uh, peanut butter uh -huh. hanging out. And uh, You don't dip them. I don't. No, I don't. Okay, good. I don't combo the two. No, 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 no. <laughs> That'd be a new no, invention. No, no. Or you know, I keep a couple of packets of like those hundred calorie almond yes. almond things around. So yes. Yes. I All love right. that. I always recommend clients put a protein bar in their purse too, mm -hmm. as well. Just take with them in their bag before or after Leave work. Leave them in the car. Exactly. You know, this way you're, you're, you're driving, you're snacking. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one is now for you, Steph. Okay. Sharon's sending in a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Stephanie. I'm Sharon Williams from New York City. I'm wondering what is the difference between static and dynamic stretching and what kind of stretching is best to do before and after a walk or workout? So dynamic stretching, I'm going to show us here, Al. Uh -huh. We're going to come forward into a little bit of a lunge. Mm -hmm. And this is a hip flexor stretch. So we're dynamic stretching right now, which mm -hmm. means we're moving. These stretches are in motion. And these are to warm up the muscles in our bodies that uh -huh. we're going to be using to walk. Right. So we do this here. And then you can go ahead and step forward. And then mm -hmm. we're going to side bend here in motion again to loosen up the core, the sides of the hips, because we're going to be using these for our walking and for our workouts. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of a workout, once the muscles are warmed up and right. they've been used, we do what's called static stretching, which means we hold this stretch for 10 or 20 seconds, mm -hmm. getting into the front there, the hip flexor. We can also do quad stretches by holding onto the ankle well, or the could... toe. Yeah, <laughs> you can do this lying down on your stomach too and bring your foot towards your butt, mm -hmm. but this helps to stretch the quad. And again, hold for 10 to 20 seconds. So dynamic stretching, stretching in motion before, uh -huh. static afterwards. Is there an alternative to that, like where you put your foot or something on a stair and kind yes, of like, you a can, chair? Yes, absolutely, or you can come down on to the knee and uh -huh. do that stretch like this or you can lie down on the ground mm -hmm. and bend one knee in and hold like this all right in the meantime becky's got a question for me what kind of music do i listen everyone wants to know this al yeah i, I like upbeat <laughs> yes. I, you know, I 
I, when we're driving in the car, the biggest fight Deborah and I get into is what kind of music. Because she likes <laughs> ballads and eh, the slow music. I like upbeat stuff, like Elton John, yeah. Four Tops, you know, stuff like that. Yes. It's got a beat to it. And I don't know how, and listen, not yucking your yum, <laughs> but I don't know how people like listen to books on audiobooks while they're walking. Right. It's like, uh, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, well, and you know, research shows that the more upbeat the music is, the harder and faster you exercise. Boom. So you're on it. There you go. <laughs> Wake me up before you go-go. Okay, yeah. uh, next up, Chelsea's got a question for you, Steph. My question is, how do I keep from getting discouraged when the weight won't come off? There's three ways to answer this question. One, focus on those non-scale victories. So things like my clothes are fitting looser, yeah. or I have more energy, I'm sleeping better, I'm in a better mood, happier mood. But then secondly, I would say, look at your workout plan. If you're doing the same old workout and not seeing results, it's time to change it up. Ah. If you're walking and if you got results the first couple months, but you're not seeing results now, you've hit a plateau. Because your body's kind of gotten used to it? Your body's gotten used to it, so you want to change it up, make your muscles get. And then finally, focus on food. See if you can reduce sugar, maybe add in healthy fats, more protein. Change up your diet a little bit to shake things up. All right. Thanks for those questions. They were spectacular. And thank you, Steph. Sure. Really appreciate it. <laughs> we're starting February off in the best way ever. Let's keep it going and hope you'll join us next time on Start Today. It's so Perfect. beautiful. And it I would great. literally look at this and never know that there were no eggs in this. No eggs. I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. Incredible edible eggs really are, well, pretty incredible. From a simple hard-boiled egg to a stunning souffle, eggs are essential parts of so many meals. They give great lift to pastry, make dishes super decadent, and they're also just delicious on their own. But how do you replace them in a plant-based diet? I'm going on a cross-country hunt to find out how chefs are cooking up savory meals and sweets, all without cracking a single egg. Right now, it's breakfast time. So I'm headed to a local spot right here in Brooklyn that's turning chickpea flour into a breakfast staple, the perfect scramble. Hi, Sama. Amanda. Nice, so nice to, to meet you. you. Amanda. Nice to meet you, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, nice to meet you. So excited to be here. Should yeah. we get inside? Let's do it. Let's, Let's go. go for it. Awesome. Cheyenne Willis and Amanda Fox own and operate Satan's Helper in Brooklyn, New York. The couple, who wed in 2016, dish up vegan twists on classic New York City deli dishes. Their specialty? Remaking breakfast staples with a variety of plant-based eggs. A lot of people, when they go plant-based or they try and start eating a more vegan diet, right? Mm -hmm. Eggs are something that people seem to miss. So you do a lot of really interesting things with eggs here. And I want to know, how do you mimic the texture and the flavor of a regular egg? Tofu just is never going to be eggs, so you just have to get to that closeness. So with our tofu scramble, Cheyenne uses a process of doing three different kinds of uh, tofus. So they'll do one block of tofu in cubes, so you get that like little cube aspect. They blend some aspect to make it creamy, and then some they match with their hands. So you get like a different sort of a scramble, like a creamy scramble with like little bits of bite to it. From tofu scrambles, to a chickpea-based omelet, there's no shortage of creative plates here. There's a lot of different avenues you can take with plant-based food, right? So why did you choose a vegan deli? We're both from Pennsylvania. We both come from like getting your sandwich from the grocery store. And it's just like a classic nostalgic feeling. I grew up cooking with my grandparents and my mom, and it was just always classic Americana food. So we decided that this would be the most natural road for us to take. Um, and this is just what came naturally to us. Amanda and Cheyenne first met during high school in Pennsylvania. A few years after graduation, they reconnected and quickly fell in love over their shared passion for cooking. We've just been always obsessed with food. Cheyenne's actually a classically trained pastry chef. The two moved to Brooklyn and worked together at several restaurants across New York City. 
they tied the knot at Dunwell, a vegan donut shop in Williamsburg. What is your favorite part about working with Cheyenne? We're in each other's brains, 100%. <laughs> After working in traditional restaurants, they both had dreams of creating a more equitable eatery, run with a focus on treating staff fairly. So we decided that when we made our space that it would be everybody's on the same playing field. We're all equal. It doesn't matter who technically owns it. It doesn't matter who does what or whatever. Everybody gets paid the same. We all are just here working together as a team. In 2018, Amanda and Cheyenne started running a vegan pop-up, serving homemade seitan at various locations around Brooklyn. Seitan, the restaurant's namesake, is a high-protein meat substitute made from wheat gluten. The chefs use seitan to recreate plant-based deli meats, like bacon and roast beef. I think the interesting thing about our food is we base it on those flavors that you're so used to. So when we were coming up with our salami recipe, I was like, okay, so what goes into actual salami? And we took those ideas and those flavors, so it became the base for this nostalgic food that we can now make vegan. After a successful run, the pop-up graduated to a storefront in 2020. Putting down roots in a permanent location was vital for the couple, who wanted to create an inclusive space for vegan and queer communities. We get to meet so many different types of people, and obviously because we're a queer-owned company, we attract all the queers, which is perfect with me. We have our loyal customers that have been with us from the jump. The same person who ordered from my very first pop-up came in the other day. I was certainly ready for my breakfast sandwich. Cheyenne took me into the kitchen to make a Satan's Helper signature. All right, so what are we making first, Cheyenne? So we're gonna start with the nomlets, our chickpea flour-based egg. You say nomlet? Nomlet, Like yes. nom nom. Absolutely. I love that. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna start with some chicken flour here. Okay. To make a perfect nomlet, building the right eggy texture is key. Cheyenne mixes oat milk, lemon juice, and oil with chickpea flour, or basin, a common ingredient in Indian cuisine. Have you tested this with other flours, or have you landed on chickpea flour being the best for I an eggy? I have definitely substitute? tried with regular flour, but it is weird. So that's why we use the chickpea, just to okay. keep it like, lighter, fluffier, okay. less harsh. It looks really nice. It smells good already. Yeah. A few simple spices amp up the flavor and color of the dish. A lot of spices in here to Tons. make it nice and nomlety. Yeah, <laughs> delicious. I feel that uh, a lot of times in vegan cooking, people don't add a lot of spices. Cheyenne's secret to upping the savory factor is kala namak, or Himalayan black salt, which comes from North India. It adds this, this really nomlet. <laughs> wonderful um, sulfuric acid taste and brings that egg flavor really to the that front. That egginess, yeah. 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 The omelet cooks for about five minutes before getting a flip. Look at that. Stunning. Gorgeous. Yeah. So we'll know when she's done, when she's a little bit firm. Okay. Yeah, she's pretty much good to go. This looks really good and it smells amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. It's like, it's such, it's giving me such a savory pancake vibe, mm -hmm. even though it is also an omelet, so I love it. The omelet is served with even more plant-based breakfast staples. All right, so I have our housemate. The bacon. Bacon here. This is made out of seitan, I'm It assuming. is, and there's like oats and cheese, Ooh. jalapenos, a bunch of wow. fun stuff in here. We do not skimp on anything. Love that. And so I fried this up, and we're just gonna lay this gently down. Amazing. Just give it a little bit of fluff there. Love it. And then we would just close the lid up. Ta-da, a totally vegan BEC. Here I go. Woo! Whoa. Whoa, Cheyenne, whoa. Lots of flavors. The omelet is crispy. The bacon is super flavorful. It's delicious. Thank you. The eggless egg sandwich really blew me away. Now it's time for lunch, and I happen to know a fantastic ramen spot on the other side of the country. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you too. NBC News, streaming free now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. How many of you were up there?
there at least like 11. How real is this going back to the moon? <laughs> You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love you too. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Among the countless ramen spots out there, Ramen Hood in downtown Los Angeles is truly something special. Everything on the menu is totally vegan. Ramen Hood was co-founded by Top Chef Season 2 winner Ilan Hall and world-renowned chef Rahul Kapkar in 2015. There you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. I'm so excited. Ramen Hood is one of just a few restaurants in the country specializing in plant-based ramen. And they were the first to offer a vegan soft-boiled egg, a traditional topping for this comforting soup. Rahul, you yes. make vegan ramen. Can you tell me about why you do that and how this all got started? Uh, it was actually my friend's idea. I was working in Denmark at the time, and he called me and he was like, hey, I have this idea for a vegan noodle concept. That friend was Ilan, who had been running Esh, an Israeli barbecue joint in Brooklyn. Why make it vegan? <laughs> My business partner had a restaurant that was very meat heavy, and he was catching a lot of flack from vegans on Twitter. <laughs> and that is kind of, it's not like the catalyst, but he was just kind of like, all right, well, I mean, I can do vegan food. In 2014, Elon invited Rahul to cross the Atlantic and bring his expertise from one of the world's most prestigious fine dining restaurants, Noma in Copenhagen. Part of the reason he called me was because the restaurant I was working at, we were serving, I think, like 24 courses at the time, and like 16 of them were vegetable forward. And then once we kind of started talking about it and refining it, it just made sense for us to do ramen. Ramen's something I grew up eating. It's like a real uh, kind of like comfort food for me and definitely nostalgic. I used to come home from school and have a bowl with my grandmother. Traditional ramen broth is usually made with pork, beef, or chicken bones. Sometimes it's a combo. But Ramen Hood uses vegan dashi, a liquid base made from kanbu and shiitake mushrooms. This is a spicy garlic sunflower seed broth. Uh, we've got some bean sprouts in here, baby bok choy, uh, king oyster mushrooms, scallions, sesame seeds, chili thread. After pressure cooking and blending the ingredients with sunflower seeds, the chefs are able to create a creamy, umami-rich broth without any animal protein. But Rahul thought their vegan bowls wouldn't be complete without a classic topping, a creamy, soft-boiled egg. Why was it important for you to add this vegan egg into um, this ramen? People expect an egg in ramen. It provides that creamy texture that kind of people are looking for. And in like a traditional bowl, it can be a really nice, like different thing to be eating. Like you've got chewy noodles and you've got this pork and then, you know, you've got an egg that's like a soft boiled egg. It just makes the broth richer and it kind of makes your entire experience eating the bowl feel richer. Ramen Hood's secret? Mixing the dashi from their ramen broth with agar, a gelatin made from seaweed. Teach me how to make this. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward. So we're gonna take 500 grams of our broth. Okay. This is the agar here. We're just gonna put a little bit in. Dump this in here. So I'm stirring this around to make sure the agar doesn't clump and settle. Okay. And how long does it take to get to the point where you want it to be? Um, not long. It'll take a, just a couple minutes. After the agar mixture simmers, it's poured into a custom mold to create an egg shape. How many of these do you make a day? Uh, about 150. Within just a few minutes, the liquid firms up, and it looks and feels just like a boiled egg white. This literally tastes like 
First of all, this tastes so good. It tastes like ramen broth, like a lot of umami. But also the texture is very egg white. Yeah, because it's this just the broth. It's better. like, it's got the richness from the sunflower seeds. Yeah. To make a whole egg, the chef uses a melon baller to scoop out room for the yolks. That's so crazy how like gelatinous it is. Like a egg white. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna go. Don't judge me. First time. That was pretty good. That was better than most people's first try. When the egg whites are firm, it's time to fill them with the creamy yolk. It's vegan mayo with food coloring and black salt, like okay. Indian black Call salt. Enema, yeah. yeah, so it's got the uh, egg flavor to it. Okay, yeah. cool. And you so, just pipe it in? Yeah, here. Yeah, that's it. I'm like looking for my affirmation. Just, just go to, <laughs> yeah, just do the awesome. There you go. This jiggly, soft-boiled egg helps complete a ramen experience that hasn't been available to many vegan foodies for years. Okay, I'm going for the egg. I feel like I owe it to us to go for the egg. I think you should just one bite it. Wrong. It's so good. I just, Thank I you. truly haven't had ramen in years because I mostly can't eat it anywhere. So this is revolutionary for my life. Like, cool. this is a plot twist for me. I love it. I'm coming back. I'm bringing my parents next time. This vegan hard-boiled egg might be pretty advanced for a home chef, but I've got a super easy egg swap for baked goods that only requires two ingredients. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the oh. pop star, baby. Oh. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. NBC News, streaming free now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in. Whenever it happens, wherever you are, NBC News, streaming free now. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. We begin tonight with breaking news just coming in whenever it happens, wherever you are. NBC News, streaming free now. What do people need most right now? Did the state and or law enforcement drop the ball? Migrant families now stranded in Mexico. What's the World Cup experience been like? It's your news playlist. Top story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You don't know when your moment's coming, but when it does, you take it. If you're looking to replace eggs in your baked goods, maybe you're allergic, you're vegan, or you simply don't like eggs, a flax egg might be the substitute for you. I'm gonna show you how to make two flax eggs today. So we're using two tablespoons of flaxseed meal with five tablespoons of warm water. You can see it right here. This is gonna blow your mind. It's super simple. Grab your flaxseed meal, add it to a bowl, clean bowl. And next, I'm just gonna add my warm water. I know, it's challenging, right? We wanna give this a nice little stir, get everything nice and incorporated. All of the flax should get in there. We're gonna let this sit aside for about five minutes until it gets nice and thick and gelatinous. After, you can use it as a sub for your eggs and your baked goods. So I'm just gonna let it hang out. It's gonna chill out, have some spa time. See you soon. Welcome back. It's been five minutes while I waited for my flax egg to do its thing. You want to wait until it's nice and gelatinous. So that might take you a couple extra minutes. No worries. Let's check the texture. 
Check this out. She's thick, gelatinous. I keep saying that word, but it's true. Flax eggs really work like eggs to help bind and thicken your baked good. It's not gonna rise exactly like eggs would, but you're not gonna taste it at all. It's still gonna be a delicious and perfectly baked baked good. I'm not saying this belongs in a museum, but it might belong in your cookies, okay? Flaxseed isn't the only swap vegan bakers can use to replace eggs. One bakery in Portland is using all sorts of different ingredients, from applesauce to tofu, to make plant-based desserts that are totally decadent. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. It's the best time of the morning. Time for the pop start, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. No stress, no mess, just yum. That's it. It's the best time of the morning. Time for that pop star, baby. I'm feeling the vibe today on the show. For Dateline Premium, subscribe now on Apple Podcasts. When it comes to pastry and baked goods, eggs are pretty egg central. They definitely help bind things together in baking. They provide moisture. They have some fat and protein, which just provide the structure for the baked good, you know, for it to, to rise, they give lift. So they are really hard to replace. This is Lisa Clark, the founder of Petunias, Portland's first all vegan and gluten-free bakery. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. She's also an expert in egg-free baking. It really depends on the product that we're making and the qualities that each egg substitute has and what you want the end result to be like. And the other ingredients that are in the recipe, you know, it has to work well with what you're making. We use a lot of coconut yogurt, which gives a lot of moisture and it helps make things a little lighter. Applesauce also does help to give moisture um, and a little bit of lift. And chia seed meal, I love, and it's very healthy for you, which is added bonus. We use this like in our chocolate chip cookie. It works really well in cookies to help bind things together and give a nice texture. This is silken tofu that's pureed with a, a milk, so you could use coconut milk, almond milk, rice milk with an immersion blender. That's really nice in like a pound cake that we make or a poppy seed muffin that we make. It helps give some structure and stability. In 2003, Lisa learned she was intolerant to dairy, gluten, and eggs. She decided to take control of her diet by turning to one of her favorite childhood hobbies. My mom is who taught me how to bake, and it's just something we did together all the time. She had ALS when I was a child, and she passed away when I was 12, um, which was really, really hard, and so there wasn't a lot that we could do it together because she was so limited physically. She was in a wheelchair and I was the youngest of three and I was home with her all the time and helped take care of her. Um, and one thing she could do was just explain to me how to bake and tell me what to do. And I would have our little KitchenAid mixer and you know follow the directions and get up on my stool and do it and I loved it. And it's one thing that we could do to bond and to do something together. She had a little ceramic pig's head that hung over the stove when I was a kid and her name was Petunia the pig. And so when I was trying to think of a business name, I remember the pig who was at my dad's house, and I thought, that's perfect, Petunia. Lisa adapted her mom's recipes to be gluten-free and vegan. It took her months of experimenting before she was finally ready to start selling her baked goods. I remember when I started doing this, I 
I really didn't have doubt. I knew that it was going to go well and I knew that there were other people like me that had dietary restrictions or lived a different lifestyle and that there was um, a niche to fill. Petunia's Pies and Pastries started as a booth at Portland's Farmer's Market in 2009. Lisa's Cowgirl Cookies, Pecan Sticky Buns, and Gorgeous Cupcakes immediately appealed to people with various food allergies. Every week, every day, I would go set up my, do my whole setup, set up my table, my booth, and get out there. And there were so many people that would come, wait in line, like down the whole farmer's market for, I don't know how long. I would have people come and just be in, in tears because they haven't been able to eat like a donut for 20 years or something. Or, you know, kids come with food allergies um, and moms crying because they can't find a cupcake for them. And now they can have a cupcake. And um, that makes me emotional. <laughs> It's awesome to see that gluten-free, vegan, dairy-free, egg allergy, whatever it is, we can accommodate these people and make everyone feel special and everyone feel included and just bring joy to everybody that we can. Petunias has expanded over the last decade. They have a bakery in downtown Portland and a national wholesale business. It's a family affair to keep things running. Lisa's husband, Jacob Williamson, is a former barista. He manages all things coffee in the bakery. Her sister, Erica Clark, runs the wholesale business and the company's social media accounts. But I'm here to learn all about Lisa's innovative egg substitutes. I'm really interested to know how you landed on all of these different egg subs. How did yeah. you figure all of this out? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know how I figured it out. Actually, I think just a lot of practice and testing mm -hmm. recipes over and over and you change one thing every time so you end up eating a lot of like wasted pastries. But, but eventually you arrive at this is the right mix and you find it and you keep it. On the menu today, decadent chocolate cupcakes. What are we doing first? So we're going to make the chocolate cake batter first. We have our flour blend here right. you can put in there, which has rice flour, millet flour, tapioca flour, and flaxseed meal. Wow. And then we have our natural cocoa powder that's sifted. And then we have all of our leavenings and our salt. Whisk that. I love a whisk. <laughs> Instead of eggs, this batter stays moist thanks to a special squash, pumpkin. It's going to give it some structure and a lot of um, gluten-free products, especially without the egg too, it can, they can dry out pretty easily, but like the pumpkin and applesauce um, help bind it together, but also they do give a lot of fluff um, and moisture, right. so it works out perfectly. Next in, organic canola oil, coconut milk, sugar, and espresso to really pump up that chocolate flavor. So now we can add the dry ingredients. This looks so amazing. I love batter. It's a struggle to get it to the pan sometimes. Oh yeah, totally. So I came prepared with oh a my spoon gosh. to taste it. Yeah, try it. As all try normal it? people do. Right. right. I love you're prepared. Right. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> good. That was good. It's crazy because you really don't even need eggs for this. You for really it to taste don't. delicious. Yeah, you don't. That's the thing. I just there's I feel like you really can make everything without eggs and they're just not necessary, so why not do it a different way? The batter is much thicker than a traditional cake batter, making it super easy to scoop out perfectly even portions. That looks great. Super cute. Perfect. Very yeah. fluffy. It's it a is. very fluffy batter. It is very fluffy. Yeah. Why is it so fluffy? It well, I think it's just... I think we just did a really good job. We just did an amazing <laughs> job. We're gonna bake them at 350 in the oven for about 20 to 22 minutes or until um, you put a toothpick in the center and it comes out clean. Now to the most artistic part of baking, decorating. Lisa uses dairy-free butter to make super creamy frosting that also pipes well. This is our salted peanut butter buttercream, which is amazing. It's so good. This is the fun part, and you just have to not worry too much. I always say that cakes and cupcakes can smell fear, so if you're <laughs> hesitant, it's not gonna work out. You try it. I'm going really heavy. You did a great job. Am I hired? It's perfect, okay. yeah, I love it. The cupcakes are topped with melted ganache and torched marshmallows. Bubbling up. <laughs> Voila, a beautiful chocolate cupcake with a plant-based twist. Oh, look at that. It's Perfect. so beautiful. And it I would great. literally look at this and never know that there were no eggs in this. No eggs. Oh my god. 
You know what's crazy is you can't have peanuts. I can't. But I do know someone who can. Yes. Your husband Jacob. He can. Jacob, yeah. You have to come he share this loves with me. peanut come on. butter. Cheers. Cheers. This is insane. This is like, this is honestly so delicious. <laughs> so fluffy. <laughs> it's got so much texture and flavor. Truly, if somebody gave this to me, I would have no idea that this is a plant-based vegan Good. pastry. Lisa's cupcakes are out of this world, and she says she owes it all to her biggest inspiration. Your mom really started your love for baking, so what does it feel like to open this bakery as a tribute and in honor of her? I know my yeah. mom sees all this, for sure. She's like guardian angel watching over us, helping me along the way, and I know that she would be so proud. Are you ready? Whether you're skipping eggs for an allergy or because you're vegan, there are so many more options now. Culinary innovation is making eggs more accessible to everyone. Good Monday morning breaking news. A massive earthquake rocks Syria and Turkey.